Julio, even though they only have four sacks this year, they don't necessarily need sacks. They got to keep them in the pocket. They got to make them force some throws. Yeah, I think that's what they probably worked on all week long is keep making him step up in the pocket and not kind of get out. If he does scramble, you want him to scramble to his away side, his left side. So you may see a spy on him and then clamp on guys downfield. They got to find a way to get off the field on third down. Really 15 of their last 20 possessions defensively have resulted in points for the opponent. I shortchanged Peter Puyos a little bit in the uh, pregame. Mentioned he had 4,000 yards. That was last year alone. He has over 10,000 yards throwing the football for 75 touchdowns, and he has rushed for over 1,600 yards. Getting ready to kick the ball off is Cody Wilkinson. He will kick it to his left side where it will be collected by C.J. Emil. Out over the 20-25, and then he tripped himself up. I don't think anybody made the tackle. John Leone on the sideline. Let's go down. We do have a penalty. Here's John. Thanks, Gary. Yes, football season has arrived, at least in the eyes of the Leopards. They come in at 0-4. They're hoping it's a new start today. It's arrived in terms of the weather. Michael, you talked about it. Hey, four short years ago on this very field, two young quarterbacks, Drew Reed and Peter Puyos, had an absolute shootout. Lafayette prevailed. Five touchdown passes for Drew Reed. My, how things have changed. Peter Puyos in his fifth year leading a potent Holy Cross offense. Tall order for the Leopards today, fellas. And you may be wondering why a fifth year for Peter Puyos. He was injured last year in game number four. He therefore got a medical red shirt, and that's why he has another season. On the other side, it's Sean O'Malley, 6'2", 200-pound freshman out there for Lafayette. He has won two Rookie of the Week so far in the Patriot League, and he has an empty backfield staring at him right now from the 12-yard line. Backfire, and he's got Matt Morazic. Morazic will turn, and Morazic, it's good to see him get a catch as the tackle is made by Akeem Walcott. Mike, a gain to the 19. Yeah, good recognition by the freshman quarterback. They emptied the backfield. I want to touch on a couple of guys here up front, Teron Hampton and uh, also Gavin uh, Barkley. Two freshmen up front did a really nice job. Joey Chenoweth has been the home run here, but that was a nice read by O'Malley, realizing three deep coverage with the empty backs he had one-on-one -on, -one on the weak side. So it brings up a... Uh, Second and three after the seven yard pickup and the handoff goes to Deshaun Brown and he, he gets hit pretty much immediately as coming up to make it is Akeem Walcott. He got some help from number 44, Ryan Brady, one of their outstanding linebackers. Here's the D. Well, he talked about it, Nick McGrath right there and Ryan Brady. Those guys really roam the field. But up front, I see a big difference this year in the Holy Cross defense with the size and the athleticism they have with the up front guys. They really take on a lot of blocks and allow those linebackers to go. The secondary, I think, is going to be tested today because O'Malley has been really ripping it through the air. Ryan Brady had 14 tackles against UConn in their opening ball game. Hand it off, and Mike, that might be as an important run as you're gonna have early in a ball game. They need it that first down. It's run by Mike Dunn. The tackle is made by Chris Riley, the strong safety. Lafayette to the 23 is a gain of two, and they first down. Well, they got no penetration. It was great up front, just a nice job down block it on the right side again. That was the uh, right tackle, Gavin Barkley. He did a really nice job, kind of just sealing down. And then Colin Bradley, don't forget, 65, Logan Greaser is out today. Colin Bradley filled in well last week. A few mistakes here and there, but they're a good double team and allowed Dunn to get to the edge. Our starting lineups were brought to you by Papa John's Better Ingredients. Better pizza, that's Papa John. Here comes Deshaun. He's not going anywhere as he has met at the line of scrimmage. And in fact, will lose yardage. Back to the 20-yard line. As coming up to make that initial hit is their best linebacker, maybe the best linebacker in the Patriot League. Nick McBeth, 44 tackles to lead the team, five tackles for a loss against an outstanding New Hampshire team. He had 14 tackles in that ball game. But give credit to Jack Kutchke, who also was the first one to get there, a loss of three. Now that's the penetration that they didn't get on the third and one, but on the first down, they just sold out. They want to force Lafayette, get them off schedule, and they've done that here with second and long. Lafayette in a tight, oh, oh. we got to get a flag. We are. Well, the defense moved, but yes. I'm not sure it was an offsides on the defense because then Lafayette reacted to that. Yeah. This will be an interesting call by referee uh, Jeffrey Kajinski. He called a false start on Lafayette. That's hard to believe. False start. Offense, number 75-yard penalty 
Remain second down. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that call. That was Teddy Capsis, the left defensive end. He jumped into the neutral zone, which caused Gavin Barkley, the freshman right tackle, to put his hand up. So that has to be initiated by the defense. That's got to be a five-yard penalty the other way. I don't agree with that call. So, so far, Lafayette with two penalties, not allowing them to get out of their own zone. This is a very deli uh, delicate situation here for the freshman quarterback. You don't want to turn it over down here, especially on second down. Look for seven, eight yards, maybe a screen or a draw. Yeah, they need 18 for the first down. As Mike said, you always like to get about half of that. Back to throw. Sean O'Malley, pretty good protection. It starts to break down, but he steps out of it. But he has nowhere to go as he ends up at around the 11-yard line. So he'll lose four yards on the sack, and the distance gets even greater. Well, just no time for him. He's just got his eyes drop. Watch his eyes drop immediately with the rush right there. You get Capsis again inside, and then you get Kutchke coming around. So they did a little twist inside on the young offensive line for Lafayette, but the initial penetration caused the quarterback to drop his eyes, couldn't look downfield. Here, take a look at the officials for today's ball game. It's Jeffrey. I'm not sure what the rest of it is. Genicheski, Ed Kiefer, Terrence Brown, Nate Long, Jack O'Keefe, Brendan Johnson, and Mike Peel. Lafayette against the team that is seventh in the nation defensively on third down. They only give up first downs 25% of the time. They'll get the ball out here to Joey Chenoweth. Chenoweth is going to try to find some running room. Certainly not enough for a first down, but he gave Lafayette a little bit of breathing room as he gets it up to the 24-yard line before Amid T uh, Tyler is there and Chris Riley to make the tackle. Yeah, I actually think this is the play they should have run on second down just to pick a little bit up. So O'Malley actually turns the wrong way. He's supposed to fake the toss to the field of the sideline of Lafayette, then come back with the right-handed throw. So it set it up a little bit awkward there, but a good pickup by Chenna with, like you said, Gary, a little breathing room. As the punt, and we've got a good punter, but punting into a very strong win today. That hit is Lafayette's like. Michael Turk, and Lafayette falls on the football, but there's no indication that the ball was touched. Right through the legs of Richie DiNicola, and he actually came up to field it. It looked like the ball went off his ankle, but it went right through his legs, if anything else. So the punt is on the Holy Cross side of the field, and that turns out to be about a 40-yard uh, punt. Get a chance to look at the first look here at Pierre Puglio's. Lafayette fans have had a look at him for four out of the last five years. But uh, you know what they're going to do. They're going to come out, again, a lot of formations, a lot of trickery, a lot of movement, a lot of pull it out, kind of RPO, that run pass option stuff you see a lot from a lot of teams around the spread offense this year. He also has 16 career rushing touchdowns. Mike said after the knee injury last year, he has not run quite as much as he used to. But he can throw the ball. Here he quickly gets the ball to Blaze Bell, the wide receiver. He leads the team in receptions as he has now 27 of them. He's tackled on the play by Matt Rothrock, but that's a big gain early to the Lafayette 47, a gain of 16 yards. Well, Lafayette showed their hand a little bit early. The pressure downfield, two guys out in front of Blaze Bell that time. Good decision. And again, an RPO, just looking at the defense and finding out where the weakness is. Senior quarterback found it. He found it to the weak side with the screen. Daquan Walker is their lead, leading running back, 170-some yards. He'll get the ball here, and he'll twist and turn his way up to the 45-yard uh, line before Lafayette's Brandon Bryant is there. He got some help by Dante Leonardo to the 45. Wow, those are plays right there. You can see Peter Puglios probably should have pulled that ball. He doesn't pull it as often as he used to, but that ball with Dante Leonardo coming down hard, he did a nice job keeping his shoulder square. And you can see Lafayette, a little bit of a different defense here. Three down linemen, four linebackers, including uh, uh, the offside linebacker, Dante Leonardo, a little blitz inside. Second and eight from the 45. They give the ball off to Walker, and Walker is going to go around the left side, tackled by Lafayette's Phil Parham but not before he gets to the Lafayette or 35 yard line. That's a gain of 10, another first down. Well, so far, Puglio's calling all the right uh, plays to the outside. You saw Lafayette, the Leonardo again, just cheating inside enough so they get the edge. You get both guys hooked. You got to get Trent Crossing down there. He's got to make that play. He's unblocked to the football and he gets stiff armed. It doesn't make the play. This is a team that averages almost 30 points a game. So for them to move the ball is not unusual. Pujols under center this time. Turn around, he's back, he wants to get rid of it quickly. Can't find anybody, and fires a nice strike as wrapping up 
the wide receiver is Eric Mitchell to make the tackle. The catch is made by Jordan Montgomery, who has 14 catches on the season. Let's take a look at the Lafayette D. Well, this is a defense that really kind of has been struggling lately to get off the field. That's the only thing. They got a lot of athletes. They've been better with the pressure. They are number one in the Patriot League in takeaways and fumble recoveries and interceptions with nine total. The problem is their offense has given up seven, so only plus two to the, uh, to the factor right there. They need to do a better job on third down. A nice job by Pujols to survey the field to get that completed pass. As carrying the football was number 31, Gabe Guild. Tackle is made by Phil Parham. Guild will be shy of a first down by a yard as he gets it to the 26, a gain of three. Uh, we'll see what Lafayette does right here. Third down and one. First time we've seen two backs in the backfield next to uh, Pujols. And the ball off, and that will be a first down. Good surge that time by the offensive line of Holy Cross, led by a great push by Rory Costello, the right guard out of Orlando, Florida. And that will be a gain of a couple of yards. Yeah, nice run by Gabe Guild. He's a senior. Gabe didn't play a lot last year, obviously, with the injury. Came back 154 yards this year, 4.8 a carry. Also does a nice job catching the ball, three catches for 19 yards. So he's a guy that does a lot of different things, much like uh, Blaze Bell. Three first downs on this drive, which started on the 37-yard line. First and 10 from the 24. Gary right, okay, changing the play right here. You can see they just widen them out. Look for something maybe with that one-on-one -on -one coverage at the top. They want to go big. No, it's a hook pattern. It looked like they were going to go to the corner of the end zone, Mike. The hit hook pattern by Jordan Montgomery. They just didn't hook up. Good defense by Lafayette. Yeah, you saw the bump and run on the outside by Parham, and only single high safety, so immediately Puglio said, listen, we're going to run a comeback. We're going to take off to the outside, try to run Parham off and come back. Parham's been very, very good, leads the league in interceptions, and actually I think he's top 10 in the country right now with three picks in four games. Well, the big boys, the leading uh, interceptor, is has four of them. So he's up there with some of the big boys. Here's a quick pitch out, and it's dropped. As that ball was a, a pattern out of the backfield, Miles Alexander just dropped the ball. And it's Holy Cross that will be looking at a third and ten. And a huge third and ten right here. Remember last week, Lafayette forced a field goal by Princeton after they had a penalty, which continued to drive. But again, you get a look at Alexander here. He's just going to take his eyes off the football. It's the right call. It's the fourth guy out the front side. But you see Bo Bosch on his feet. One of the few linebackers in the league that can play on his feet. Bo Bosch did a nice job closing out, caused the incompletion. So third and ten, a big play here for the Lafayette defense. The ball at the 24-yard line. Back to throw Pujols. No pressure at all. He's going to go into the end zone corner, and it's a little high. Just beyond his outstretched reach of number 14, Andre Hart. That would have been his first touchdown. He could not make the catch. Well, they had the right call on a flag route versus the inside leverage right there, and that's a safety. You see Thomas making the play right there. You see just got to continue to stay on the hip. You see the field goal kicker run it come out right out now to kick this field goal. A.J. Wells, he's the best in the league. But in his head right now, a missed extra point that would have right. won the game over Dartmouth last week, and then a missed field goal that would have won the game. Or, no, I'm sorry, a two-point conversion would have won the game last week against Dartmouth. They ended up losing by a point. Yeah. This is a 41-yarder. It's down. The kick is up. And the wind has been tricky all day. It hits the crossbar and is no good. So the Lafayette Leopards will hold on defense and get the ball back. Yeah, a little surprising there from Wells. Again, you said it, Gary, and you. And I think that was the right call. We'll be out upright. We'll be out of here. 0-0, zero, zero, first quarter. Stay with us. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape presented by Easton Hospital. If you need an ER fast, try their ER. 30 minutes or less, that's their ER pledge. You won't want to go anywhere else. As you get a look at the size of the young men playing football on both sides of the football and back to throw. O'Malley, oh, that's a perfect strike. Right into the belly of Joey Chenoweth. He runs himself out of bounds up at the 43-yard line, a gain of 19 yards. Wow, talking about fitting it in a tight window. Great protection up front, too. Look at O'Malley again, just reading half the field, but he had the high-low on the corner that time. Just a great job for him to look off of Mil Muhammad, who kind of bit up in Morazic about a five-yard out, threw it right over his head between him and the safety. Poor Joey, that was catch number eight on the season. He came in with 130. 38 yards, so give him another 19, up to 157. Back to throw, and staying on his feet. Nice job by Rocco Palumbo, who turns it upfield. 
and gets up to the 47-yard line before Neil Boyster, the defensive tackle, is there to make the tackle. And we're in Holy Cross territory, and that's a gain of 10. Yeah, 14 catches now for Palumbo. He's averaging probably about 18 yards. See a run right here back to the weak side. Stopped pretty well there just for a short gain. But Lafayette looking at a little tempo right here. You see first down, a little bit of tempo. This is what John wants to do. This tackle is made by Ryan Brady on Deshaun Brown. Deshaun with no gain on the play. But Michael, you almost have to run the ball at times just to keep that defense a little honest. Well, absolutely. And you have to run it on certain downs, I think, to get on schedule. The first down play, very good. The second first down play. But you need to gain yards on first down to create manageable second and third downs. This is not a manageable second down. It's second and long. From the 47-yard line. Back to throw, looking, firing, and that's an incomplete pass. Not on the same page that time, although the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. That may have caused all of the problems by, I think, Kendrick Knight. A little bit of early contact, too, by the linebacker, McBeth, who had the line, uh, the uh, receiver out of the backfield that time, Deshaun Brown. They, they do a lot of things with Deshaun. You got maybe look for Deshaun. We talked about it inside the huddle. These easy routes, the slants, the slides, the circle routes, you know, and keep your eye right now, I think, on Dylan Wadsworth working in the middle of the field. You're going to get some three deep here probably, so maybe have something in the middle. Leverage need 10 here on third down. And three. Everybody locked up with the safety in the middle of the field. Dylan with the tight end. Looking for Morazic downfield. They get it up in the air, and it is going to be an incomplete pass as coverage was supplied by Chase Stratton along with Damian Baker. And we, even with all that said, Matt almost got his hands on this football. Yeah, and this is where O'Malley, you see where his eyes go. They immediately go to the right side. The pressure was coming there, a good pickup for Lafayette. There was an extra man coming against the quarterback he could not account for, so he had to get rid of it early. But the free safety's read to get over the top from the center of the field over Morozik was fantastic. Not enough time for O'Malley to look the safety off, so Lafayette will get a chance to pin them in deep. So it is Turk who will punt the ball away. This went off the side of his foot, but that's not going to hurt the Leopards all that much, although it did not get a forward roll. It got a sideways roll out of bounds at the 18-yard line. 29-yard punt. It will be the Crusaders with the football when we come back. We are back. Take a look here at this last play. Yeah, I just want to point one thing out quick. As you saw Valley take the snap, he immediately had pressure off the right side, so he had to get his eyes to the right. And with a free safety in the middle of the field, that's a long way to go. But the pre-snap read was correct. Just too much pressure in his face. Without the free safety, Tyler coming yep. over. That is right in Mrazic's hands. A really nice pass. Carrying the ball is Walker, Daquan Walker. As uh, Judice is there to make the tackle. Big Anthony Judice out of Monroe Township, New Jersey. 6'2", 275. Came in with 11 tackles, now 12. And he is a transfer out of Syracuse University. Yeah, him and Breedlove have been fantastic. As you take a look, you look at Breedlove, he's at the top 98. They moved him really to a defensive end position, more and more kind of comfortable where he played in high school. And he's got the athletic ability to do that. Second and eight. Ball is right at the 20 yard line. And again, Holy Cross changes the play as the uh, play clock down to just six seconds. So they have plenty of time. And the ball off again. No, it's Pujols that keeps the ball. And that's what he can do so well, is run the football. Boy, as a freshman, sophomore, and into his junior year, he could really, really give you a good fake, hang on to the football, and get good yardage. A gain of 15. Well, that's what you talk about with a guy like Puyo. He's just, a, he's just a, the pro quarterback. I mean, he sees things, so many things. He sees Lafayette showing the pressure. He understands that that end man in the line of scrimmage is going to have the mesh point. He doesn't run it very often, but a very timely run by him to get them a couple yards and get them a first down. That's first down number four. It is first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Hand the ball off. Ga gathering it in is Kozier. Dominic Kozier, and he'll get run out of bounds. Dominic's out of Milford, Massachusetts. Uh, Jerry Poe with the tackle as a gain of five. Yeah, good pursuit by the Lafayette defense that time. Just enough to pick up five yards, but watch Breedlove. He's going to get out there and kind of make him go sideways, and then you did a good job there. Michael Root's got a little, little better job on his legs. Knowing he's going to get cut, he's got to either go under or over the top, but do a little bit better job with the inside-out pursuit. Allowed a little bit more yardage than they really should have got. Well, before that run, Kozier had averaged 10 and a half yards per run. And with the football, a lot of running room is Martin Dorsey. 
And Dorsey finally gets tackled by Demetrius Breelow, but not before he takes it to the Lafayette 44-yard line, a 16-yard pitch and catch. And now you see the tempo pick up a little bit. And I think Nate Beachley, the number 21, was got a little bit of jersey right there, but no call. Again, two penalties against Lafayette, zero so far against Holy Cross, and they're across the 50-yard line. From the 44, Pouillot's quick throw again. That's, again, a wide receiver slant pattern as the ball is caught by Tate Beachley as the tackle is made by Michael Root at the 435 of Lafayette, a gain of nine. Remember, all these plays are being called at the line of scrimmage. I mean, the play comes in, the formation comes in, but then you can see him just kind of walk around and take a quick pre-snap look at the Lafayette defense. He's got two on two down here at the bottom with a free safety high in the middle. Lafayette really trying to stack the box and take away the run. This has usually been downhill run. Perfect play for an offense when you have well, there's a nice, nice play by number 90, Andy Lobadev. He did get a little bit of help from Jerry Poe, but running the football was Gabe Gill, and he lost the yard on the play, so it's gonna bring up a big third and two. I actually thought he lost more than that. Watch the penetration right here. You see the center, he's trying to go up. The left guard's gotta block the shade, and there's no way to block Andy Lobadev. He's just too big and too quick inside. He gets great penetration, and again, Lafayette has an opportunity here to get off the field, but you never know. They may be in four down territory if they don't pick it up here. They need a couple of yards. Daquan Walker is in the backfield. Let's see if Pulios gets rid of the ball. He does, and Walker will not get the first down. He is met by the left. Well, I don't know, second, third effort. They're gonna give him that second effort, and that will get them the first down. So it looked like he was stopped, and all of a sudden he was not stopped, and that's a gain of three. Yeah, and quit right here, I mean, the play stopped. He's got four guys holding him up and no no, uh, no whistle right there. Just, that's an odd play. See, Jadisi had him up high, nobody down on the legs, but good leg drive to pick up that first down. But I think he should have been stopped. Prior to that, the whistle did not blow. A great effort by Taquan Walker. He gained two yards and then the length of a football, and that's what gave him the first down. From the 34-yard line, first and 10. Faking Pollos, back Pollos. He's going deep downfield. And this is going to be an incomplete pass. Lafayette with good coverage. It's coming over was Yazir Thomas from his safety position as going step for step was Phil Parham. That looked exactly like the way uh, Holy Cross yeah. defended uh, Morazic. Yeah, just a great job. Again, free safety deep. Lafayette bringing a little pressure by Trent Cross and down here off the bottom, but similar play. Pollos is kind of staring it down a little bit. You know, Parham's the kind of guy that'll take a challenge on and he's done it so far today. A little bump and run, and you see Coach Luke uh, Thompson, the defensive coordinator, kind of changing it up, living on the edge a little bit with this Lafayette defense, and so far they've been up to the task. Second and 10, minute 40 to go here in the first quarter. Back Polio's firing, and that's about a tough, tough play to stop. Caught by Tenio Iyeni. Iyeni, that's his sixth catch, and he's run out of bounds immediately by Lafayette's Phil Parham. And that's kind of designed to pick up five yards. It got four yards. Yeah, third down. Now you pick up a big third down right here. And on third down conversions, they are pretty pretty darn good in the Patriot League. Second in the Patriot League. We see that just enough yardage to make it a more manageable third down, but an opportunity again for Lafayette. You think maybe Holy Cross has two downs to pick this up. A sack here for Lafayette would go a long way. They need to get to the 24-yard line. Nice to have a five-year quarterback. Looks over the defense, makes what he thinks is the right call. He's back to throw. Again, he's going to go down. He's got a man wide open, and it's just off. The outstretched hand of Tate Beachley. As he got it in his gloves, he could not hang on, or that would have been six. There was no one in a white jersey near him. Well, they called it at the line of scrimmage, the wheel route, and it was a pick. You saw the outside receiver come in and just pick off Yasir Thomas right there. You see Yasir Thomas runs into the uh, outside receiver, so a pick play, no call on the play. I think, honestly, I'm not crying here, but I think they're getting away with a couple plays. That was a pure pick on the outside. That's the only reason the receiver was wide open. Well, it's four down territory for Holy Cross. It's a fourth and six, and they're gonna go for it here. Not yet straight man, they're gonna bring some pressure. Now they drop out into zone. Julios throws underneath. A lot of bodies, they're not gonna get the first down. The ball is caught by Tate Beachley. But the first one to get there was Michael Root, the middle linebacker, and the Leopards hold again 
with 51 seconds to go in the first period. They'll put the ball down at the 26-yard line. Well, we used to call it show, and then you see everybody get out. So Puyos, he doesn't know what to do with the football. He thinks it's straight man. Lafayette's coming after him. On the snap of the ball, Lafayette backs out. Just an awesome call that time by Luke Thompson, defensive coordinator, and really well executed by the Lafayette defense from a blitz to a zone defense. They dumped it off right into the zone, and a great job coming up and making a tackle by Michael Root. Let's go down to John Leon on the sideline. Hey, Michael. Hey, Michael. Just curious, if you had told John uh, Garrett before the game that he'd be in a dead heat this deep into the first quarter, I think he would have taken it. A low-scoring game obviously favors the Leopards. You don't want to get into a, a shootout with a quarterback like Pujols. You know, having said that, uh, Michael, you're right. Lafayette's defense is rolling the dice because it's clear that yep. they're matching up on the edges. They've got seven, sometimes eight guys in the box trying to stop the run, uh, but it's leaving them vulnerable on the edges and deep. So far, the Lafayette deep backs have been up to the challenge. Yeah, great point, John. That's exactly what I'm seeing up here, and you saw it there. You saw the pressure, the get out, just a really nice call by the defensive staff. It's time for the Patriot League standings, presented by Coordinated Health, the team that cares for the Lafayette Leopards. As you look at it, you see Holy Cross and Bucknell, the only teams that have played a Patriot League game. Holy Cross beat Bucknell 20 to nothing a couple of weeks ago. And today, this is the only Patriot League game. The other games, Colgate's at Cornell, Harvard at Georgetown, Lehigh at Wagner, Monmouth at Bucknell, and Yale is at Fordham. Interesting, Harvard at Georgetown is being played at the old JFK Stadium. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I mean, I see how many people they get packed in there, but that's a great opportunity to kind of spread the word about the Patriot League. And you mentioned Holy Cross and Bucknell, two teams, I think, that are very good defensively and offensively they can move the football. So that might become a big game at the end of the season, early in the season, Patriot League game that was lost by Bucknell. Leopards first, or make it their third possession of the first quarter. As they hand the ball off, carrying it is C.J. Emile. Emile has the corner and then gets stripped up and hit rather hard. As coming up to get underneath him was Damian Baker out of St. Louis, Missouri. The junior stops him at the 30, a gain of four. That's what you got to love about C.J. right there. You know, C.J. can bounce to the outside and use that speed. Something that Deshaun Brown tried to do early in his career. But you see C.J. a little bit more quickness than Deshaun. Gets outside, picks up real nice yardage on first down. For John right now, Garrett, stay wide open. Continue to use the middle of the field. I like to see Dylan Wadsworth get involved, or even Matt Morazic on a drag route. Something that's just a nice, easy, simple throw for your young quarterback. It's second and six. Holy Cross showing blitz. Lafayette not snapping the ball when Holy Cross was coming. They still are coming. Backfiring, and that ball is over the middle and not hung on to. As that ball was really fired, Rocco Palumbo just could not quite get it. He was covered, but not too closely by Chris Riley. Yeah, I think Rocco, I wonder if Rocco got a little bit screened by the route underneath. Watch, you're going to get the route that just stops right there. And he's got to catch that football. Rocco will tell you, he's got to go up and get that one again. That ball just thrown a little bit high. You got to finish your throws. Again, O'Malley, the thing I see a little bit today, just a little happy feet. Got to set your feet, trust your pass to, uh, up front, your protection. They did a good job that time. The freshman, Gavin Barkley, picked up the blitz on the edge. Maybe the final play of the first quarter. Dylan Wadsworth will readjust his position. They need six yards for a first down. Back, and it's not going to happen. As Bolt as getting nailed for the sack, the second sack of the game. First one in there is Jake McCarter. We'll be back. Puts the football. Let's hang Not because of the win. Holy Cross calls a timeout here, and that's probably a good call. I mean, they need the wind as long as they have it. Definite, definite difference throwing into the wind, so they want at least a chance to return this with the leverage of the wind against Turk. John, let's go down to you. A little strategy move here by Holy Cross. Yeah, too late for me. What do they say about great minds, Michael? Yeah, there's no question <laughs> about the fact that Holy Cross saw one second left on the clock. That's a huge break for them because down here on the field, I'm telling you, I don't know what it looks like up there in the booth, fellas, but down here, there's a pretty stiff wind, and it could yeah. mean the difference between 10 or 15 yards of field position. Yeah, the only thing I kind of disagree with the Lafayette offense a little bit about, they took over that possession, Gary, with only 51 seconds left in the quarter so to run the ball twice run the clock out change the wind direction punt with the wind if you're going to play field position that has to come into your your thought process and lafayette did not right there with two incomplete passes 
So Lafayette will punt into uh, a 10 mile an hour win, which has been gusting today. Michael Turk with his third punt. He keeps it low though, so the wind keeps him from getting a lot of distance, but certainly not return. We'll be back with second quarter action, no score. We are back as Holy Cross hands the ball off to Daquan Walker on first down. He'll get it to the 48-yard line, pick up seven, and bring up a second and three. Then we'll see how important that uh, timeout called by Tom Gilmore is in this ball game. Pulio's back, fires the football, has a first down. And getting balled and manhandled is number 88. That catch made by Jake Simheiser. Hauser, he is five catches now on the year to 35, a gain of 13. Well, that's a perfect look at the run pass option and the right tackle number 78 that time for Holy Cross was downfield about eight yards. So again, a, a no call right there, but the right tackle, excuse me, 79, Charlie Steele. Here we get a quick run up the gut. As the ball carried by Daquan Walker. And uh, he's tackled on the play by Lafayette's Jack Lamb. The gain is to the 30, so that's a pickup of five. You know, for Holy Cross, you've got to think they think they should have at least six, eight points on the board right now, moving the ball up and down the field, and you know they want to get this in the end zone and take control of this football game. Gabe Guild in the backfield. Gabe Guild will get the football. Has a big hole to the left side. He made a perfect cut as he'll take it down to the 20, pick up 10 yards, be another first down before Jerry Poe along with Brandon Bryant make the tackle. Yeah, nice just kick out there by James Murray, the left tackle, and then you saw Bernard and Piker, the two seniors, three seniors on that left side. You're gonna get yardage. You wanna go over that left side. That's Murray and Bernard and Piker. They opened up a big hole for Gill. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. Seems like Holy Cross has been down in this area the entire football game so far, but they have no points on the board. Yeah, last time he ran the wheel route on this, so you got to look for the pick inside if you're the Lafayette defenders. It's Guild back. Guild won't get it. He'll block, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. As good defense that time by Phil Parham, as that was intended for Tenny Oyeni. And Phil Parham just hit him at the exact moment he had to. Yeah, I actually was looking for a flag yeah, to come I was out. Too. Had his hand on his back. But you see him look to the right and then back to the left. So Lafayette did a good job covering up on the front side. Again, Lafayette showing a lot of man-to-man -man defense. A lot of single-man high safeties here. Pressure coming up the middle here. They come after Puyos this time. He gets rid of it as catching the ball is Martin Dorsey. And again, a lot of gang tackling by Lafayette. First one to get to him is Eric Mitchell. And uh, they'll mark it at the 16. That'll be a gain of four. And again, ball comes out real quick. Nice job by Eric Mitchell, the sophomore corner that time, avoiding the block. The guy was coming out to kick him out. There was his receiver coming back underneath. Great job by him. But you got to think here, down in the red zone, you come away here three times with no points, that is going to be a huge boost for the Lafayette defense to see if they can continue to keep them here to some sort of fourth down and long, maybe create a field goal attempt. Puyo's back. He's looking. He's stepping up. He's got some running room. He's still stepping up. He fires the ball out here, and it is caught by Miles Alexander. A great job of being creative that time by Peter Puyo's tackle on the play by uh, Tymir Jones at the eight-yard line, a gain of eight. Well, we said it right there. You saw just a great job, uh, as Gary said, of extending the play. Lafayette had him. Watch the extension of the play. See, great penetration up there by Ramsey. He hops over, he switches hands, finds the open receiver. That's what I was alluding to in the beginning of the game about extending plays. You see Tamir Johnson kind of like goes dead to head. Yeah, it may have been yeah, a stinger. Shoulder. But the ability for him just to, and no defensive back can cover somebody for six and seven seconds. And really, that's what that play lasted. A good six to eight, nine seconds. Very difficult for the defense. The defensive line got to do a little better job staying on their feet and keeping number six in front of them. Miles Alexander in the backfield again. This time he'll be on the right side of Puyos once he makes the call. Gotta be aware of Blaze Bell. I'm sorry, Gary. Blaze Bell's the guy down here inside the goal line. Back. That's where they're going to go that way. And again, again, not quite on the same page. The cut came a little late. Jordan Montgomery, the intended receiver. Phil Parham was there with the defense. Yeah, I thought he was going to go to Blaze Bell. He's really been his go-to guy, but he looks one way. Good pressure up the middle that time by Brandon Bryant may have caused him to kind of throw that ball wide. 
but he really doesn't lock in on one guy. That's just a great job by Puyos finding the open man, a little back shoulder fade, just a little bit too far. His passes have been a hair off today. Otherwise, it could be a 14-0 lead. So it goes to second and goal to go from the eight-yard line. Just join us. We're in the second period. No score. Puyos will hand the ball off with the football and carrying it into the touchdown. Is Miles Alexander, his second touchdown of the year. This will be an eight-yard run with 11.47 on the clock. Well, again, just when you thought Puyos was going to keep the football and throw it, watch that great block. You see Lafayette got caught in a little bit of a twist. Breedlove going out, the defensive end. I think it was Bo Bosch coming underneath. Not sure if we can get another look at it, but the twist and the movement of the defensive line, good pickup by the offensive line on that right side by the Holy Cross Crusaders. Costello and Steele just picked it up, opened it up, and a nice run by Alexander gets to the end zone. A.J. Wells is in to kick the extra point. McGrail is the holder. The kick is up. The kick is good. Finally, some ports up on the board. 11.47 to go. Second period, 7-0. Holy Cross. We are back. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. Well, there you go. Again, you just saw you got the tail end of it right there, the twist play as Isaiah Vent really kind of makes contact at the one-yard line. Alexander got quick feet, good body strength up top, but the twist inside by Lafayette, I think expecting pass. And then you saw Holy Cross with the run call. You're not sure if Peter Puyos called that at the, at the uh, line of scrimmage. Cody Wilkinson will kick it off. C.J. Emile will collect it at the nine-yard line. C.J. goes right up that left sideline. Puts his head down, and he'll take it out to about the 22 or 3 yard line. If where Lafayette will put it in play, Corey Stefanik with the tackle on special teams. Now in that first quarter, you saw quarterback uh, Sean O'Malley, 4 for 7 for 49 yards. He did get sacked twice. I put one of those on himself, one on the, on the offensive line. But he's kind of trying to spread it around. Joey Chenoweth had a nice catch to open up the last drive for about 19 yards. He averages 19 yards a catch. He's got two for 32. And Morazic again, just that one catch early and no catches so far for Wadsworth. Lafayette running the football right now for just about 0.5 yards per rush. O'Malley has the Sean Brown in the backfield. going to keep it going to try to run out of there and fire the ball as he just got rid of it the closest leopard to the football was will eisler but uh, that one really just thrown away and again lafayette trying to do something on first down to create a more manageable second down that time they had two wings and a tight end on that side so the pressure again coming back inside i'm wondering if those lafayette the uh, linemen maybe want to try to cut or get some of these guys on the ground because they're coming out high and the strength of this defensive line is going to be tough to overcome for some younger, smaller offensive linemen for the Lafayette Leopards. Second and ten. Holy Cross sneaking up a little bit as Ahmad Tyler. Now he retreats, but he looks like he's coming now to change the defense. Back to throw, firing it out here. There's Dylan Wadsworth heading down the sideline. Shrugs off a potential tackler as the tackle was made by Nick McBeth. And they will mark it at the 36, a gain of eight. Here's a big third down. Well, similar for both defenses. A lot of teams playing the single high safety, which allows the flats to be open. You see the corner just react, and Macbeth a little late getting out there against, I think, the best tight end in the league. So that brings up a manageable third down here. The one thing you don't want to see O'Malley do right here is look at one receiver. Make sure you get a good pre-snap read. Looks to me like you're going to get some two deep. You got two high safeties, which should allow the middle of the field to be open and maybe rotate a little deep here. So Lafayette with two wide receivers on both sides. Somebody maybe down the middle of the field should open up. That was Dylan's 22nd catch of the year. Back, and Chenoweth has it, but he doesn't have the first down. He'll get run out of bounds at the 35, and in fact will lose a yard on the play. Ahmad Tyler there with the uh, run out of bounds. Yeah, again, just no chance. Mally has, he really can't set his feet in the pocket, and that time threw off his back foot, and... You know, Chenoweth, I think he was trying to run it out and got bumped and ended up running that back pass backwards. So, again, got to make sure you know where the sticks are, and I'm sure Joey did, but this ball just ends up coming back. You see the pressure right there. I like to see O'Malley step up through that gap. Step up in the pocket. Use your legs to pick up that first down. So far this year, he has not used his legs enough. Michael Turk, the punt away, this time with the win. It's a very high punt that will be collected at the 20-yard line and running with it. 
is Richie DiNicola, who uh, set out last week with an injury. He gets run out of bounds by number 45. Trent Crossan will be back. We are back. This is the fourth possession by Holy Cross in the ball game. They've got it at their own 30-yard line. Puyos will keep the football, will get hit, throw the ball away. He tried to find an open space just to protect himself as Lafayette's Ryan Barnett, along with Lavelle Ramsey, were in there. And that's an incomplete pass. Nine for 17 for 80 yards right now. Yeah, that, that's a senior quarterback, too. That was intentional grounding. He just threw it in the middle of the field. Right. There was nobody there. He just found an open spot to dump that football, but good coverage on the outside. Lafayette living it up right now, playing a lot of man-to-man. -man. And the ball off. Keeping the ball and not getting much is Daquan Walker. And Daquan will get a yard as uh, Jerry Poe is there to make the tackle, brings up a third and nine. And I think the most important third down and nine of the entire game. You don't want to get a two-score situation here. Lafayette has an opportunity. Watch Jerry Poe just keep leverage. This is what you want to do on the defensive end position. Right, Boom, right there. You make contact, you keep leverage, you separate, you violently get off the block, and then you wrap up and make a play, and that is terrific play by Poe to bring up third down and long. You draw it up, this is where Luke Thompson wants to be. Third down and long for his defense to get off the field. Brandon Bryant showing blitz, he does not. He backs up, Pujols again escapes, fires the ball and got the first down. That's a pretty amazing catch by Martin Dorsey, who went up in the air to grab it and he hung on to it as he was being draped by a Lafayette Leopard. That gain is a pickup of 13 yards. And you see, there's the difference between the senior and the freshman quarterback. He obviously moves up in the pocket, buys some time. As you get the, inter the uh, near knockdown that time by Mitchell and a first down run. You saw Holy Cross pick up the okay. tempo a little bit here, that first first down. But Ryan Burnett, 97, good job by him. Two consecutive plays putting the pressure on Puyos. Gabe Gill carried. He carried for three yards. As it is a second, and they say six, and they're right, as it's a gain of four from the 48-yard line. Back, Julios throws a perfect strike out here. Ball caught by Dominic Kozier, and Kozier just kind of found his way to pick up the little extra yardage before he got tackled by Dante Leonardo. And are they going to move the chains or not? It appears that they will, and that will be a pickup of... With seven yards. Yeah. Watch this inside move right here. You see here, Thomas, he's got to know where his help is. His help's to the outside. So he's got to work inside out on that. Cannot allow cutback. The cutback picks up the first down that time by Kozier. First down, number 12. Rolling Pulios. He'll fire here, and that's a, a well-timed play right to Martin Dorsey, who took a hard shot from Yazir Thomas. But he does pick up good positive yardage to the 38. That'll be a gain of seven. And tempo right now, you see that coming off the edge again. Lafayette losing a little bit of leverage that time. Poe coming off the corner, got cut, allowed Puyos to get to the edge. Another quick throw, and there's a missed tackle. And that's a big missed tackle. It allows Richie DiNicola to get some big yardage up to the 25-yard line. That's a gain of 13 and another first down. Eric Mitchell on the tackle. Great job by Nicola. Watch him. He knows he's coming right here. He knows he's coming. Just a little sidestep inside, and you got to break down and bring your feet with you. So Luke Thompson's got to, I think, pull you here inside a little bit, talk to him a little about the way he's approaching his tackles. A drive that started on the Holy Cross 30 is now down to the Lafayette 26-yard line. Daquan Walker in the back. No, check it. That is not Daquan Walker. That is Miles Alexander. And he's going to get basically stopped at the line of scrimmage as coming up the initial hit from Lavelle Ramsey. They just come at you from so many different angles, and they always have the ability to hand the ball off between the tackles with that big senior-laden offensive line. So they hit you with that ability to run it inside, run pass option. If he doesn't like what he sees outside, Lafayette now visiting corners, bringing Parham over on the same side with Mitchell, some man-to-man. -man. They want to go deep again. Pulios got hit as he released it, and it's incomplete, recovering beautifully as Dominic Kozier was open. But a nice play by Phil Parham to recover. He was beaten 
and a little bit of pressure on Puglios kept them from getting that ball out a little quicker. Well, they're running a lot of crossing routes, so even with the three receivers to the outside, a lot of pick plays. You see the pump and go there. Good pressure by Lafayette up in his face. May have allowed that ball to be a little bit short, but Lafayette's got to get on the same page with who's covering who and understand that one of them is going to get picked. So right now, a lot of pick plays and crossing routes uh, by the receivers for Puyos. Another big play on third down. He's got a lot of a lot of time. He does get rid of it. Now Lafayette will close and close rather quickly as that's Derek Mountain who catches the football coming up and closing was Isaiah Event at the 23 again of three. And yeah, that looked like an odd play. Puyos kind of rolled to his left but all the receivers were on the right but a nice job by the linebacker kind of getting a piece. Watching the middle of your screen here right there. Boom. You see Brandon Bryant just knock Mountain off his route and I think that's the drag route that he was looking for so nice job by Brandon Bryant the senior linebacker to get a piece of the dragging tight end through the whole play off fourth down here fourth and seven Walker in the backfield he can receive the football Puyos back he'll fire and it's caught but is it a first down it is not going to be a first down as that ball is caught by Martin Dorsey Going to bring the chains, I think, across. They probably have to, but it's just no way this. No, is he does be a not have down. a first down. <laughs> yes. I think Phil Parham there to make the stop. They needed seven. It looked like you got about six and a half. Yeah, Martin Dorsey just ran the out a little bit short that time, and again, pretty good pressure. I'm giving the defensive line for Lafayette some credit, getting up into the grill of Puyos a couple times late in that series, and I don't think that's going to be a first down. I think he's going to be at least a, a, a full football short. I'm. 100, maybe 95 <laughs> yards away. Well, I'm gonna take a shot. I think you're 195% sure. 195 <laughs> pounds plus, but I'm gonna take a shot here and say that he's gonna be short of that first down. He does. He does not have it. You're gonna. You're gonna get the best possible wow. look. Awesome. Big Great psychological look. boost that the Leopards held here. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Not even close. We'll go the other way. Lafayette will have the football. First and 10, deep in their own territory at the 17-yard line. All right, Gary, I'm going to preach again. 5.59 left in the half. Holy Cross gets the ball coming out of the half. It is so important right now to use some clock here. You've got to run a four-minute offense. You've got to pick up at least one, possibly two first downs. We'll take another look at it right here. Puyos looking to the outside. He's got Dorsey. Dorsey doesn't run the play deep enough. Oh, Parham. Yes, yeah, MVP so, so far of the defense. He's played question. terrific. He's been all over receivers. Let's go to another guy that plays terrific on the sideline. Here's John Leone. Well, yeah, haven't lost a step, Gary. Hey, uh, don't mean to state the obvious, but, you know, the offense has got to hold up their end of the bargain. This defense has played valiantly. How many times has the All-American quarterback, Peter Poulos, had the ball in this first half? It seems like forever, yeah, and yet zone. the Lafayette uh, team is just down 7-0. So let's see if the offense can generate a drive here. It would be huge. I, and, you know, John, I'm not even looking for points right now. Until you cross the 50, you can't be thinking about points. you got to be thinking about first downs and continuing to run this clock. Remember, Holy Cross used the timeout. Coming up, the Farmers Insurance Halftime Report. As we'll have an interview with John, we're going to talk to Dr. Bruce McCutcheon, who is retiring as soon as they find a replacement at Lafayette. We'll have highlights, we'll have stats. John, here's a stat for you, a stat for Michael. Holy Cross has won 41 plays. We've run 21. The last two, one, two, three, and out. Yeah, it's just been too too much of that Lafayette uh, offensive ineptitude uh, to run the football. they got to mix in a little bit of run. Last week they ran seven screen plays. Today they've run one or two more wide receiver screens, but they got C.J. Emil and also Deshaun Brown uh, involved in a lot of little screen plays out of the backfield. Those are long handoffs, and I think that's what Lafayette has to do to at least get one, maybe two first downs here and get this under two minutes before the end of the half. So important this drive, so important for the Leopards. From the 17, Deshaun Brown is in the backfield for Lafayette. Sean O'Malley will move to Sean Brown out of the backfield passing situation. Oh, count. Back to throw. Looking and looking. Firing downfield. That's interference. Here come, no flag. Oh, my goodness. Wow, gracious. that was oh, definitely wow. pass interference there and no call. Wow. Incomplete pass. Well, I mean, just mugging 89 down the middle of the field. You got a linebacker covering with the exact call you want. Three down the pipe. You go spread right there, and you just see Macbeth. He's just grabbing. He, he knows it's a flag. 
it wasn't Macbeth that time, it was 44, but they, they really wanted him down the seam, and he just latched on to the, to the senior tight end, and that should have been a flag. That was Ryan Brady with the coverage. He'll get credit for that coverage. Although it did look to both of us up here that he was doing a lot of tugging and, and holding. Get it out to Morazic. The ball thrown on the wrong side of Matt, so very difficult to make that catch. And the Leopards now not using much clock. Andre Chevalier is there with the coverage. You're right, Gary. Two incomplete passes. You've used so far about 11 seconds off the clock. So this is a situation where you're just going to end up giving the football back. They need a first down so badly here. And a penalty right there would have put Lafayette out probably over the 30-yard line. And they had just not got the benefit of any calls today. There have been no penalties against Holy Cross. Lafayette penalized twice very early in the first quarter and in fact one was on the kickoff the other a five yard penalty back throwing they got a man wide open and that's going to be a first down as that ball was caught by Rocco Palumbo as he slides down and they just do give him the first down a gain of 10. Well these are the things that excite you about the freshman quarterback watch this throw this is a 37 yard throw an out pattern Great job by his senior making a play for him and picking up that first down. Now, you reset the offense. You got the clock rolling, 533 left. Again, don't forget, you can empty the backfield. You, again, you got to use Wadsworth down the middle. Lafayette with a lot of bunch formations last week. This time, they kind of spread it out, go two by two. Leopard's first first down in the second period. A little screen pass set up pretty nicely. But the one guy face that was mask. not blocked was Ryan Brady. But I think they might have a face mask here. So hold everything. Yeah, I think that was Brady that came out. So Brady doesn't get called for the interference call. Gets called for the face mask as he pulls Deshaun Brown by the mouth. Personal personal foul, face mask, defense number 44. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, this is the screen that I've been looking for. They ran again, six or seven of them last week. They just looked to the left side. Good job by the freshman quarterback. And maybe if Donnelly can get a piece of him, it might have been a bigger play, but it ends up being a 15-yard penalty. And a good job here. Those long, or those, me, those little short passes can create some offense for you running the football, basically a long handoff. And that's what Lafayette, I think, has to go to here. And then slip in a draw or a screen here or there just to keep that D-line honest. First and 10, the ball at the Lafayette 42-yard line. Fake the pitch, throw it out here. That's Dylan Wadsworth. He's a tough guy to bring down, but they get him low. And he'll get the ball to the 49. Down there to make that tackle was a Phil Zobrest, a defensive end. And again, for O'Malley here, just keep your eye on the play clock. You want to make sure you get the clock. You'll snap this ball with probably 15 seconds left. Get it down as you break the huddle. Good job by Wadsworth right there. Difficult throw. That went through a lot of traffic, that ball. A lot of bodies over there when he made the catch. Yeah, big second down and two. I think you want to try to get the first down right here and not bring up a third down. Genoweth readjusts in the slot, fake the handoff, get it out here to Joey. Joey's going to go the other way. Boy, that did not look like a good decision off the bat. And he made the right decision as he outran everybody. As finally running him down was Tenny Oyeni. Or check that 34, it was Andre Chevalier at the 46 yard line, a gain of five and a first down. You know, I talk about the maturation of Sean O'Malley and the maturation of this kid, Joey Chenoweth. You know, early in his career, he caught a lot of bubble screens and stuff where he was a little bit shy about getting it up there, trusting his blockers. That he caught in a lot of traffic and separated with some strength and speed for the first down. Uh, it's going to be a timeout called by Lafayette. So we'll call a timeout also. The Patriot League Network is premium web-based programming produced by the Lafayette Sports Network and GoLeopards.com, as well as the other member institutions of the Patriot League. Viewers can watch streaming video of the Lafayette contest live and archive and other exclusive content online for free on computers or mobile devices. There are no per game monthly or annual subscription fees to access content on the Patriot League Network. And we welcome all of you watching us on Masson today. Uh, it's good to have you uh, with us as well, of course, on WBPH Channel 60, RCN TV on the Lafayette Sports Network. Here's John Leon. Hey, Gary Michael, full disclosure, I am a good Catholic boy, the proud graduate, 1970, of St. Vincent de Paul High School in Syracuse, New York. I got to tell you, coming up to Holy Cross is tough. Michael, you hit the nail on the head. It's been tough flag-wise for the Lafayette Leopards up here. <laughs> Back to you guys. 
We got one big one, though, on this drive as they hand the ball off and going nowhere. As filling, talk about filling a gap. Coming up and filling that gap was Ryan Brady and Deshaun Brown is going to lose yardage back to the 49, a loss of three. Well, you show some clinic film here. Just downhill. Watch him come downhill, Ryan Brady, right there. You don't get the tackle to come off on the block. Excuse me, the left guard's got to get up onto that. But he's so en enthralled with the the the, uh, the double team, he can't get up to the second level, so you can't really put that on the O-line. But a lot of guys in the backfield that time, good recognition by Holy Cross, reading downhill run. Leopards with a minus eight yards rushing so far in this ball game. They look at a second and 13 from the 49. Back, looking, looking, firing, and it's intercepted. Stepping in front of the intended receiver, it was intended for Jake Taggart, and Nick McBeth steps in for his second interception of the year, and that's why he probably is the top defensive player in the Patriot League. And again, take a look at the eyes of O'Malley. Never takes his eyes off of Taggart. They got what they wanted. Anytime they're empty in the backfield, Lafayette's looking for the inside receiver, and that time Taggart, who ran a little bit of a pressure out, he got up the field on Macbeth, but Macbeth just stayed in his pocket that time, and O'Malley never looked anywhere else but, but Taggart. He was covered closely. Got to come off that and look for somebody else, but a mistimed throw there to the inside, and Taggart can't separate, but the big senior for the Holy Cross Crusaders makes a play with plenty of time and two timeouts on the clock for uh, <coughs> Peter Puglios, who comes out in a very odd set here. Here's that danger, Mike, of having two possessions. Get, a, get one here and get one coming out of the locker room. They're not going to get much there. As carrying the football is Gabe Gill. And I'll tell you, Anthony Jadis is so big and so strong that if he wraps you up, there you get a look at number nine, you're probably not going to move very far. Uh, he's gotten better and better every week. Had to get his feet underneath him. Obviously, the transfer from Syracuse, so strong, so quick, and playing probably the best across that defensive line right now, especially on the inside. Holy Cross, an odd formation, came out with nine offensive linemen and ran the ball straight ahead. Now they're set with a second down and long. See if Lafayette can make a big play, bring up third down and long. They got just a yard on the play. Pujols in the pocket. He gets pressure, and the ball is dropped. As he was getting pressure, bearing down on him, I think, was 22, Phil Parham, or was it? 20, I think. Oh, was it Avent? Isaiah Avent? No, it was Parham. It was Parham? Parham, okay. yep. All right, big play here again for Lafayette. These last four or five minutes, kind of chess match going back and forth. And this is where Lafayette's got to think, do we want to bring pressure? With no free safety in the middle of the field, you got to think they're going to line up and play a lot of man. you got to look for the pick plays if you're Lafayette's defense right now. We'll see if they kind of back out, and they do. Crusaders have yet to punt. Now here's a penalty flag. We're going to get a hold. So I think this one's coming back. As that penalty flag was thrown right in the middle of the pile, and uh, Mike Puyos is saying uh, Charlie Steele. To number 88, Holy Jake Simhauser. Offense, number 67. 67. Ten-yard penalty, replay third down. So two big penalties against Holy Cross. Obviously, the face mask penalty changed a little field position. And just a great inside move right there by the uh, outside guy. That was Ramsey, I think. Just made a real nice move coming back underneath for Lafayette. Actually, it was Keith Earl. Keith Earl so athletic. They just continue to rotate D linemen. A big, big play. You know Holy Cross. They want to get out. They don't want to turn the ball over here. And for Lafayette, the question is, do you play some pressure and then make him get it out of his hands quickly, or do you allow him to sit back in that three-man rush pocket? I might bring a little bit of heat, and try to get it out of his hands, and then make a tackle prior to a 20-yard gain. You just want to tackle them underneath the chains. They need yep. 19 yards for the first down. Julios again will roll out. He will again fire. And that's going to be an incomplete pass, and that would not have been a first down. As trying to go down to catch the ball was Blaze Bell, but he really had no opportunity to catch that pass. And a pumped up Lafayette defense coming off the field. You know, they haven't got a lot of sacks or hands on Puglios, but they made him move his feet, Gary. That time you made a move to his left. If you want Puglios to move, and escape. You want him to escape to the left here, see if Lafayette can get some field position off this punt. Exactly what we talked about as the keys to the game. We said they had to not necessarily sack him, but they had to put pressure on him. Yeah, exactly. Good fair catch there by Joey Chenoweth to come up and make that fair catch. Now Lafayette with the ball with 144 left. And 
you know, I think we've seen the, the really the best of O'Malley, and we've kind of seen the worst of O'Malley. He's got to, again, again, take what the defense gives you, the screens, the draws, the things to the outside, the quick throws, and then essentially not miss when you get a chance to take it down the field. Before we snap, here's John. Yeah, Mike, hearing you talk about this, remember your, one of your building blocks, keys to the game, balance. Give them the stats, uh, run versus pass. Lafayette's got to find some balance in this offense. And they have not, John. Minus eight yards rushing, 78 in the air. Back to fire the football, and that's a nice pitch and catch as that ball is caught by Palumbo. Now there's a pass you can't throw any better because that got out of his hand quickly. Yeah, it came out. He understood it was a three-deep coverage. The corner was bailing, and when you get a bail corner on first down, you got to take advantage of it. Those have been his best two throws to the outside to Palumbo and a little tempo here by Lafayette's offense. 10 for 17 for 90 yards. Here's another quick throw out here, Matt Marazzi will make that catch as he is run out of bounds by number 26. That's uh, Akeem Walcott. Lafayette doesn't have to hurry here as with the ball going out of bounds. The clock is stopped at the 49. That was a gain of seven. And again, as much as Holy Cross defense gives you soft corners, you must take those five and seven yard gains. You cannot get away from that. If they are gonna allow you to have that, you must take it, especially on first and second down, because there's no better down to call a play on as a coordinator than second and short. Well, it's second and three. Scoreboard says four, closer to three yards for the first down. Back to throw, looking good protection, real good protection, but not a good pass. As this is intercepted, I'm not quite sure who that was intended for, but it ended up being caught by Chase Stratton. And that's his first interception of the year. And again, the Leopards forced the defense to come back on the field. Wow, this was intended for Morozik, and the linebacker just walled him off. What's the left side of your screen? Morozik's trying to run a curl, and he gets walled off on the inside by Macbeth, the linebacker. So again, just a poor read by O'Malley. Ball that should have been in the dirt, never thrown in that area. Let's go to John. Michael, you're exactly right. The play happened right in front of me, and I'm not sure if Morozik just broke off the pattern after he felt that contact. It really wasn't illegal contact. He simply was screened off, and O'Malley threw it to a spot. Well, Pulios is exceptionally dangerous in two-minute drills. Back, looking, firing. He's got his man, and he'll get run out of bounds. No, they're going to say keep the clock going. <laughs> Pelly Cross has a couple of timeouts left. That catch by Richie Di Nicola, run out of bounds and tackled by Brandon Bryant. Yeah, clock's still running now, 1-10. Lafayette again, just kind of mixing it up, playing some man, playing some zone. That was a gain of three. Julio's back, and he'll fire the long pass. That should be a first down. As making the catch is Blaze Bell. He slides just enough for the first down, as down there was Eric Mitchell. They'll mark it at the 41-yard line, again, a gain of seven. Yeah, and Lafayette again, under a minute here, not opposed to them using one of their two timeouts, just to make sure they have the proper call. A lot of zone coverage here for Lafayette. Quick flip out to Blaze Bell. He will quickly run out of bounds at the 46-yard line, again, a gain of five. Maybe you're gonna see, maybe see Luke Thompson, the defensive coordinator, dial up maybe a zone pressure here, try to get a guy like Brandon Bryant, probably the best blitzer on their team to get after a guy like Puyos, but you want some sort of a him to move his feet. The more he stands in the pocket, the worse it is for the Lafayette defense, who right now is playing a little bit more zone here with just 49 seconds left. You can't blame him for playing zone. You don't want to give up the, the big play. And you got to look at the last play, which uh, is quick. Gets you about five yards, gets the clock stopped. Second and five. No backs in the backfield right now. Puyos back. He's going to go deep. He's got a man downfield. And that's an incomplete pass, and that's terrific cut of coverage by uh, number 45, Trent Cross. And Cross had such a good week last week in his first start of his career against Princeton, and Trent Cross right there. Just an absolute terrific play by Cross. And I looked across the field, I looked at the matchup. You saw Brandon Bryant, we said he was going to come, but he was locked up with Dina Cola, probably their best receiver. So you can't do it any better than that. I think Puyos had the right matchup, he had the safety. You know, a, a smaller safety on Dina Cola. They got the matchup they wanted, but just great coverage by Crossan on one of the best receivers in the league. Third and five. Lafayette stacking the box a little bit right here inside. They're coming. Fired downfield. That's going to be a, yep, that's passing. We got a hold, too. So those penalties will offset. They should. And uh, that time, I'm not turning around, and that's going to be a face guarding and interference. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're calling here at the line of scrimmage here. 
They're coming back, Holy Cross, so it's probably going to be, a, like you said, Gary, play the down over again. There's oh. offsetting fouls. Illegal chop block, offense, number 65 and three. Pass interference, defense, number 22. Those penalties offset, replay, third down. Take a look at it here. You'll probably see more of the pass interference than the chop block. Yeah, right there, you got one guy going low on Brandon Ryan, one guy going high, and then Phillip Parn. You can't fault Phillip. I mean, he's a guy that likes to play tight, close coverage, and he's made a lot of plays today. So Lafayette, again, got to know where the sticks are if you're the Lafayette defense. You don't want to give up a big play, and at the same time, they're going to try to pick up six yards right here. Puyos back. Puyos fires. They're not going to get the first down. They'll have to punt the ball away. Catching the football was Richie DiNicola, and Yazir Thomas is there to make the tackle, and he got some help from Eric Mitchell. Another great job by the Lafayette defense. And Puyo's very frustrated as he gives the old Aaron Rodgers snap of the chin strap as he comes off the field. You know, this is a play I think you're going to see him go for the first down. They trust their defense. They know if they can pick up the first down, they go tempo. There's just seven, eight, so actually they're going to let the clock run down here. Maybe throw one into the end zone. So they leave five seconds on the clock. They call a timeout. They still have one timeout left, but they obviously will not be using that one. And everybody right now is going to talk about this last play. Don't let anybody get behind you. It could very easily be a Hail Mary, yep. but it'll be a Hail Mary into the wind. Yeah, it'll be into the wind. And the other thing you tell your defensive backs here, we'll give, you could be the coach right now. I'm the defensive back coach. I'm going to tell all my DBs, I'm going to go up in the air, and we're not trying to intercept it. There's no glory on a Hail Mary. The thing you want to do is get two hands on the ball, not one, and knock the ball to the ground and don't interfere with anybody. As you get a look at Gilmore there, yeah, he's a guy that, that's done a great job when he's been here, has a couple Patriot League championships and uh, a great offensive mind and a great defensive mind as well. You see some of the bigger, taller Lafayette DBs going back. You got Jerry Poe back there along with Yasir Thomas. Isaiah Event, the Lafayette uh, linebackers, five across at around the 30-yard line. So, Julio's back, and he's going to roll out, and now he's going to get some pressure. They'll fire it downfield. It'll be a completed pass. There's no time left on the clock as that ball is completed to Blaze Bell, and it looks like they're going to mark it at the 34-yard line just for stat purposes. <laughs> That's a 20-yard catch. We'll be back with the halftime right after this timeout. All right, let's go down to the field. John Leon with the head coach. Hey, uh, Coach John, can the defense play any better? Inspired performance. Well, they're, they're really battling like crazy, and uh, this is a good outfit now that they're playing, and we're living in the big plays. We're getting some pressure on the quarterback, and we're tackling, and uh, really proud of their effort. Uh, coach, just to keep things in perspective, this is a Holy Cross team lost to UConn by seven and absolutely annihilated the number nine team in the country. Big step for your squad, a lot of football left. We don't worry about what they do. We just concentrate on the next play, and they're doing a heck of a job. We'll get this offense rolling, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the second half. I'm not a coach. Go get him. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Michael, back to you guys. Well, we, too, are looking forward to the second half. There you see the score at the half. Holy Cross 7, Lafayette nothing. Holy Cross will have the football when we come back, but there's plenty of stuff on the halftime report. Stay with us. Of Lafayette's Jeff Kordenbrock. Jeff hasn't had any opportunity today to kick the ball. No touchdowns, no kickoffs. So he'll get his leg loosened up. And what is a raw kind of cold, windy yeah. day? Uh, we look at everybody down there, and they all look very uncomfortable. Right now, <laughs> let's hope the uh, Holy Cross football team's a little uncomfortable. Gordon Breck with the kickoff. It will come down and be collected by Alim Mohammed. Ooh. And boy, he got hit immediately, making the tackle was Jack Lamb. And very little run back by the Crusaders as the ball will be put down at the 25-yard line. Wow, what a great play by Jack Lamb. He's flying down, playing a little defense, doing his thing on special teams out of Doylestown, the sophomore 6'1", 220. 
great high tackle there to make a big play for the Lafayette defense. He's 5'11", 175. Here's John. Yeah, a little bit lighter than me, but Gary, uh, hey, one quick point. We haven't mentioned it. Jim Schiffert, Lafayette's long snapper, is back. He's been flawless throughout his career. In a close game like this, it comes down to a kick. It's important to know that Jimmy Schiffert is back. John, talking about Michael Schiffert, who is back, Jim being his father. Yes, he missed his first game as a Lafayette Leopard since walking on campus as a freshman last week due to a shoulder injury. Back to throw is Pouillos. Back to throw it away. And here we'll wow. see whether or not they throw a flag. I guess he was outside the pocket. Yep, that's what the referee is saying. Well, the linesman, that's a good job by the head linesman right there. Lafayette took away the slant by Blaze Bell. Pulios, that I think he got away with his second intentional grounding there. That's that run pass option. Great coverage by Parham. He just was all over Blaze Bell on the slant. There was nobody else out here, but the fact that he was outside the tackle box, he got rid of the football and he crossed the line of scrimmage causes the no call so it was a proper no call second and 10 from the 25 changing the play again here taking a look at that too high safety look walker is in the backfield but he won't touch the ball they're going to throw it and that's going to go through we've seen a number of balls not caught today blaze bell was not able to hang on to that eric mitchell over there on the coverage and that ball thrown with a little bit of heat throwing it into the wind and two with the wind are two different things so that one a little bit of heat goes through the hands of Blaze Bell. Would have brought up about a third down and five. Good pickup by Daquan Walker. So Lafayette brought pressure off both sides. Jerry Poe off the front side and off the back side. Looked like Dante Leonardo. So Lafayette, this is where you want to draw it up. Third down and 10. Do you want to show and get out? We've seen that from Lafayette. And we've also seen pressure. Root and uh, Brian, Brandon Bryant coming off both edges here. Looks like straight man free. Holy Cross four for nine on third down. And again, they're going to go real deep. And I'll tell you, that they're throwing a lot of balls that don't have a great percentage of being caught. Yeah. As, uh, and that's another one right there is uh, the ball thrown downfield and good coverage by Lafayette as yeah. Trent Crossan was back there. And so was 22, Jerry Parham. Yeah, uh, Phil Parham's Phil been Parham. so good lately. And, and you, you kind of get the feel like Holy Cross is surprised they have, it, have more points on the board. So they're trying to get it almost all back in one place, like trying to hit a six-run home run. You want... 20 points in one play, and Lafayette's defense is not giving it to him. Will McGrail will punt the ball for the second time today, and it's going to get a Holy Cross bounce. As instead of going out of bounds, which is where it looked like it was headed, it does bounce towards the goal line, and that's a 54-yard punt by McGrail. Yeah, big punt by McGrail, but more importantly, Gary, two straight possessions by Lafayette. The, the, the possession by the offense for Holy Cross going into the half did not score created a fourth down the possession coming out of the half for Lafayette that to me is something that that coach uh, Luke Thompson and coach Garrett can hang their hat on because that has been a real weakness for Lafayette and now a chance for the freshman quarterback O'Malley to make up for some of the mistakes he made in the second half can we put any points on the board let's see Deshaun Brown is in the backfield the ball is at the 22 yard line Deshaun will get it and got a little bit of running room kept the legs churning Got the ball up to the 25, and that's where they'll give forward progress. A gain of three. Yeah, good down, down. You see Lafayette, a couple different schemes. Down, down, pull two guys around. You pull Wadsworth and you pull Teron Hampton. So you get the freshman guard pulling around, that old handback play, a long developing play for Lafayette, but they pick up some decent yardage and second down here. Got to make sure you got to get to the sticks or at least bring up a third down and short. That was another Nick McBeth tackle on that play. Set. Second and seven. And again, they hand the ball off. And they obviously saw what we saw, Mike, the real discrepancy in running yardage compared to passing yardage. They're trying to establish a run, but they get just one. Yeah, when Lafayette tries to go wide, they rely a lot on the athletic ability and kind of that, that offensive line to make those zone blocks. Zone blocking is so difficult. It's you got to stay on the track. you got to be athletic. And so far, I think just that strength of that Holy Cross defense has taken away that type of play. So a much different blocking scheme on second down than on first down. But Lafayette, again, just trying to play a little field position here. If they get a first down, you'll see them pick up the tempo. And if 43 is not making the tackle, 44 is. And Ryan Brady made that tackle. Big play. Third and six. Back. Firing. Got his. And Morazic will have the first down. As he caught the ball, he knew exactly where the sticks were, and that's where he caught it to get that first down. As he got hit by Akeem Walcott, the cornerback, 
but that will move the chains. They'll put it down at the 33, and that was a gain of seven. Yeah, and they give the offensive line a lot of credit. They almost did like a kind of a zone blocking scheme, almost a go right kind of. Everybody runs to the right. We used to call that north and green. So everybody moves to the right. They all block their gaps. They picked up a Macbeth who was coming through the front side A gap. And uh, they just did a great job right there, and that's easy pickings. A good throw right there, and Morazic, like you said, knew where the sticks were. From the 33. O'Malley will hand the ball off. And uh, about a yard for Deshaun Brown. Uh, so get to the 34-yard line. Bottom of the pile was 90, Jack Kutchke. Second and nine. And you see Will Leisler come in there, the fullback, 44. Anytime he's in the game, good chance it's going to be screen or it's going to be run. And Lafayette last week, that first possession of the game, they went right down the field against Priston with Eisler on the field. So getting him a couple more touches in the game. And you see Deshaun running downhill. Nice downhill runner, Deshaun. Got a good job with his squaring his shoulders, line of scrimmage. Rolling. And back to throw it. That's getting a lot of pressure, and now Morazic. No, check it. That is uh, number six, Palumbo. As that looked like it was going to be lost. First, it looked like it was going to be a sack. Then it looked like it was going to be lost yardage. Ends up being positive yardage to the 37, a gain of three. Well, for the offensive lineman, you got to make sure that you get a piece of your man. When you're running screens and you're trying to get the center and the guard out in front of a wide receiver, you got to make contact with the defensive lineman. You can't just open the gate. And a couple of guys just open the gate, and really that allows the pressure right into O'Malley's face. So you mer first, it's kind of a two-part of a block. You got to chip and then get out to your responsibility. Lafayette lucky to get that back. Jack Kutchke thought he was going to get a sack there, and just getting rid of it on time was Sean O'Malley. Good protection this time. That's a nice play. O'Malley knew where the break was coming, and he fired a perfect strike to Matt Morazic as he turned around, got the sticks to move. A 14-yard game. Well, that's what we've seen from Morazic for four years. It's a back shoulder throw, and it's a strong throw. O'Malley, I love the way he throws the ball from one sideline or the middle of the field to the outside. You see him square those shoulders up. He leads with the front shoulder, and you saw the difference there of him stepping into the play. And now again, a tight end and a back in the backfield, 12 personnel. And Lafayette moving the ball out from their own 22. They're now in Holy Cross territory. Sean O'Malley back. He's going deep. And it's going to be intercepted. And that will be the third interception of the day by Holy Cross, intended for Palumbo. The interception comes from Alim Mohammed. Ah, incredible coverage by Holy Cross. They didn't bite on the play fake inside. The first down by Lafayette. They go right for the home run, but give a lot of credit right here. Good protection inside. O'Malley again, just throwing the ball. He's got a safety there. He's got a corner over the top. No chance for Palumbo. I give Palumbo a lot of credit for not giving up the fact that he made the tackle down there. That's like almost as good as a punt, but you want that on third down, not on first down. So O'Malley, again, just throwing the ball into traffic. He's got to make some better decisions here in the second half if the Leopards are going to have a chance to squeeze this one out. So it will be first and 10 from the 11-yard line for Holy Cross. This is their deepest start of the season. What a hit by Brandon Bryant on first down for no game. I talked about how healthy he's been getting. A couple of games under his belt. Last week was his best game. This is just a monster hit. This is what we saw from Brandon Bryant. Watch him slide with his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, step up, and boom, just oh. explode into the running back. Just a great play. Lafayette's been playing much better defensively on first down. But you got to look for the run pass options here from Puyos. Holy Cross has not turned the ball over at all today. Stepping up Puyos. And boy, Brandon Bryant made a really good play. There's a flag down, and I think we have holding again. This will be a tough decision for Coach Garrett because it's only going to end up being about a five yard penalty. Yeah, and it's going to be third down and eight, or third down and seven. Or do you want to push him back and make it second down and probably 18? It'll be third and nine, I think. Third and nine, yeah. or second and 17. I, I, Holding. Offense, uh, number 77. It's going to decline. That penalty is declined. Third down. And that shows a lot of trust in your defense. You don't want to give them the extra down, Puyos. Again, pressure. They make him step up. Brandon Bryant on the spy technique there gets a piece of the dragging receiver and then has the wherewithal to stop and make a play on the elusive number six, Peter Puyos. Again, Lafayette, last three possessions have forced a lot of third down and longs 
Looks like a free safety blitz come, and now they're out of it. Julio's back. He's getting rushed. He'll flip it out here. Good play call. As catching it is Gabe Gill. There's a flag on the play again, however, right at the line of scrimmage. This is going to be short, way short of the first down. It's against Holy Cross because they're asking John Garrett what he will do here. Bring up fourth down and about three, fourth down and four. And he will certainly decline again. Fourth and more, fourth and five. So I think he's going to, yeah, you said decline it. Opportunities for Lafayette. Illegal formation, offense. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. Let's go to John. Well, that's been three or four holding calls on the Holy Cross offense. And Michael, I have to believe that's a product of the abandon with which this Lafayette defense is playing. They are flying around the football field. They're making it very tough for the Holy Cross uh, uh, offensive line and, and, and blockers to uh, uh, to establish that game, that part of the game. Uh, a terrific defensive performance by the Leopards. Yeah, good chance for Chenoweth here. Got to catch this ball in the air. Leo fumbled the snap. Joey is back, and he's going to let it bounce. Yeah, that's going to cost Lafayette another 15 yards. Ball all the way back to the 22-yard line. So this punt, the last one 54, this one 62 yards. And I saw Coach Newberg. He was so upset with Joey Chenoweth for not catching that football. We'll be back. We are back, Lafayette back out on the field. Ricky Ho, our director today, and we got a little running room. Not much. Deshaun kind of realized he could not outrun Aleem Muhammad, so he sort of stopped and no game. And they tried to bounce that one again. That's where he's got to put his foot in the ground and get vertical, duck his head, pick up three yards. Muhammad, the quick, quick player on the outside. You know, Muhammad's the guy that actually sealed that game early in the year when they, they won that football game uh, um, late, and he did just a great job. He's got such great speed, and that time he really hemmed in to Sean Brown for no game. Last possession, he got his first interception of the year. That was the 10th interception this season thrown by Sean O'Malley. And Sean, a little bit of corner blitz here. Now backing out of it. Here they come. Lafayette picks part of it up, but that's going to be another sack. That will be the third sack of the season, and getting in there was uh, Andre Chevalier, the linebacker, who showed blitz, and then he did blitz, loss of seven. Yeah, and again, you just saw so much pressure in Sean's face. Watch him drop his eyes right here. Gets his eyes down, doesn't have a chance to look down the field. Just way too much happening at his feet. So some good situations for Lafayette and pass protection and some bad ones. That one just kind of collapsed. The entire pocket collapsed. And this is a down where you've seen John kind of maybe just run the football and punt it out of there. You do not want to turn it over down here. Dangerous, dangerous play. Valley, good protection, but he won't get the first down as that pass barely got back to the original line of scrimmage, caught by Deshaun Brown as uh, the hit was made by Damian Baker along with Hakeem Walcott. And that's a gain of just six. And a couple routes really at the same level. Deshaun Brown ran about a six-yard slide route. The receiver ran about a 12-yard out. And then we had a receiver at about eight yards. So really none of them looking to get the first down, but moving the pocket. I like that. Maybe you got to put that in your pocket if you're John Garrett. And and, and take a look at the fact that moving the pocket a little bit for O'Malley may help. Michael Turk punts for the fifth time. This is a beauty. And is collected at the 40-yard line by Rich Dinacola. And we're going to call a timeout following the 39-yard punt. Bucknell with 6.45 to go, working with the wind here in the uh, third quarter. As uh, they scored just the start of the second period. Those are the only points in this game. First and 10 from their own 40 yard line. Lafayette showing blitz. They are blitzing. Pulios avoids the blitz, drops the ball out. And another nice play. Jake Simheiser with the catch, tackle made by Jerry Poe. Good job, good pressure by Michael Root right there. Caused Pulios just to. Pull it down for a second, and that allowed the pursuit of Jerry Poe to make a good solid tackle on first down. Gain of three. Pulios this time keeps the football. That's the second time he's done that, and it has been successful on both occasions. 
as he takes it into Lafayette Terry to the 48, a gain of 10. Now he got uh, Bo Bosch up in the air that time. And Bo Bosch, by the time he came down, Peter Puglius had stepped up in the pocket. And the ball off. Carrying the football is Miles Alexander. Tackle made by Brandon Bryant along with Anthony Judice. Colgate right now is beating Cornell by a 14-0 score. Harvard over Georgetown, 21-0. The only games going on at the moment. From the 44-yard line, that's going to be an incomplete pass. Coverage again by Phil Parham, and that one he almost grabbed. <laughs> Phil Parham, I tell you what, he's in your pocket. I mean, he is just really playing some great coverage. The best. I, and one of the best corners in the league. Watch how tight he is. And he's made a number of these interceptions this year, stepping around guys, stepping in front of guys, but being in the pocket that time of the receiver on the weak side. Philip Parham just being a great, great job on the corner. Another big third down faced by the Lafayette defense. Julio's back. He'll step up again, and he'll drop it off. That's going to be short of a first down as the ball was caught by Jordan Montgomery. And again, in on the tackle is Phil Parham. So it's fourth and about a yard. When you know you're getting man, you run the drag route, so you're going to see you come right across the front of your screen right here. Look at Jordan Montgomery just trying to run away from Eric Mitchell. He's got to run 40 yards to make that tackle. And the ball off, first down and more. As rushing up the field with the ball is Daquan Walker. And he picks up big yardage, a gain of nine. You just kind of get a feel for Holy Cross here. They're, you just want to explode. They scored so many points this year. They've racked up so much yardage. Number one team in the Patriot League as they're trying to get more guys on the field here. You got to look for maybe play action here on first and 10. One of these receivers kind of split. Now they jump out to maybe a, not enough guys on the line of scrimmage. That's an illegal play. Back to throw, firing too far. Yeah, and that was an illegal formation. That was intended for Jake Simsheiser, and it was just overthrown. And again, I don't know if the wind had much to do with it, but certainly Peter Pulios was really visibly upset with that poor throw. Yeah, and they ran a, a, a kind of a spread formation, took one of the uh, linemen outside, and that was Daniel Bernard split out. That made the tight end eligible, but on the weak side, they didn't have enough guys on the line of scrimmage. A missed call by the linemen there. Second and 10. So he likes the wheel route by the inside receiver in the pick play. Lafayette blitzing again. They can't get the Pulios. He's gone deep again. And it's going to be too high as that was intended for Tenio Ayeni, but coverage by uh, Eric Mitchell. You can see the frustration in number six right there. He just has missed on a bunch of throws, overthrows, underthrows. This win really playing tricks with Puyos' ball today. And I think that time you said it, Tenio Ayeni, he, he got away with a little push on the back of Eric Mitchell downfield right near the goal line. A big third down here, and you got to think they're in four down territory. To get to the 20. Back. Oh, he had to rethink that. That was going to be intercepted. So he made the right decision as coming in was Brandon Bryant along, or 92 there to make the tackle, Keith Earl. And that's going to bring up a fourth and long. There was help too by Michael Root. Again, Lafayette's defense just doing a couple different things. Look at Chuma. He comes off on that. There's nowhere to go with the football. So Lafayette has taken away that first thought of Puyos a couple times today. And now a fourth down and 15. has got the Lafayette sideline really ramped up here. You've got to make a play here. Watch Lafayette probably going to bump out of this into a zone coverage. Back. Puyos getting, oh, there's a hole. No call. And they're going to uh, not complete the pass. Boy, number 98, Demetrius Breedlove was held yep. as he was headed towards Pulios, but the pass was overthrown, intended for Miles Alexander. Or, I'm sorry, number five plays Bell. And Lafayette again takes over on down. Yeah, again, good coverage downfield. And looked like uh, that time you see Thomas had a receiver behind him. But the fact that he was in front of the receiver caused the throw just to go a little bit high. And really, I think Luke Thompson, uh, the defensive coordinator and that entire staff for uh, Lafayette, it deserves a lot of credit. Those kids came in with a game plan, and they've executed it to a T today to take away some of the things that number six, the best quarterback in the league, likes to do. And they've really rattled them. Well, the offense has to keep the defense off the field for a while. C.J. Emile is in there, and he'll now leave.
the backfield. So another pass play by Sean O'Malley. This is where they like the inside receivers. Sean back steps up. Boy, Sean had all kinds of running room. He was absolutely free to run about 15 yards and then threw a pass much too quickly and a little bit low for an incomplete well, that, pass. That part of the game will come for Sean, but you said it, Gary, as he climbed the pocket, he's just got to run the football for 15 yards straight forward. Even if he pump fakes the drag, he gets everybody to move towards that, but he's got running room. He had that again in the first half. He's got to add that to his repertoire again. Just a freshman, so he, that, that'll come, but those are things that would keep this drive alive. Part of the learning process, he'll look at film and see that play. Here's a quick out. Catching it is Palumbo. He will take it upfield for a first down as he straight arms number 17, Damian Baker, pushes him out of bounds. And that will be a pickup to the 47-yard line, a gain of a dozen. Now watch this block by the senior out here, Matt Morazic. Watch what Morazic does. Great job by Palumbo, knowing he's got the big man out in front. Watch the block by 15. Just getting into the face of the defender that time and picking up that first down. Three minutes, 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. See Holy Cross now showing a little blitz off the off the field side here, which could cause some man-to-man. -man. Riley looked like he was coming. He does not. O'Malley rolls to the right, continues to roll. Well, he was actually looking, I think, for C.J. Emile to free himself up from the defender, and C.J. Emile just kept blocking. Yeah, and I think right there, if O'Malley puts his foot in the ground and cuts inside C.J., he picks up six or seven yards, but... Uh, Again, didn't throw it into harm's way, got away from it. Lafayette might have got away with a little bit of hold right here on the edge as O'Malley escapes to his right. You said it, you got to get a guy. You see CJ right there, he's blocking. He's saying, listen, just turn it upfield, get me five or six yards. So uh, O'Malley, if he can find a way to use his legs here going into the fourth quarter, I think it'll add another dimension to this Lafayette offense. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Back on the 46 yard line. O'Malley back, Lafayette strictly going to the air. Dropped the ball off. That's C.J. Emil. That time he freed himself up. Mikey went to that space where you just go down, turn around, and wait for the football. Well, you talk about stop and start. Guys that got COD, change of direction. Watch Emil right here. This is just check down. Nothing open. Be patient, and you check it down. Boom, there's the check down. Watch the explosion, though, right there. And a good block there on the outside by Rocco Palumbo. Just getting enough of Ryan Brady to allow C.J. to get to the edge. That's what Emil adds to the system. Tight formation here for Lafayette with a fullback in the game. Now they're going to split it out with a fullback in the slot. I look for Dylan Wadsworth over the middle for five or six yards here. Will Eisler is in that slot. That was a 13-yard pickup. First and 10 Lafayette. First down, number 11. Back to throw. And he's going to go and kind of on the wrong page that time. As uh, you saw the uh, wheel route, and he turned it up. And Good call. Thank Look at you that. very much. Thank You've been hanging out with me yeah. way too much. <laughs> the wheel route. I think somewhere Ross Sherman is smiling and uh, and uh, Rudolph, guys that used to run that wheel route to a T. Those two guys are smiling knowing that Deshaun's running the wheel and Gary Laubach <laughs> made the wheel call. But it was an incomplete <laughs> pass, so it brings up a second and 10. With 150 to go in the third quarter. Fake the handoff, roll right. He's got the big guy, Dylan Wadsworth. He'll make the catch. He'll be brought down pretty much immediately by Ryan Brady. But there's a pickup. He picked up nine yards on that play up to the 38-yard line. Yeah, again, getting O'Malley outside the pocket. You've seen it three or four times on this drive and the last drive, changing the launch point. When you set a quarterback, especially a freshman, six and seven yards behind the center, that makes it so much easier for defensive linemen to know where he's going to be and tee off. They've changed the launch point a little bit for O'Malley, and I think that's part of Garrett right now, kind of moving his quarterback around. And, you can see O'Malley on the run pretty good. They need a yard. And C.J. Emile fumbles the foot. No, he didn't fumble. It looked like the ball hit the ground, but he did stumble, and the stumble kept him from uh, getting the first down. Lafayette looking at a fourth down. Oh, and I think he had the first down right here. Oh, he stumbled in the backfield. He did fumble it. Lucky that ball rolled right back into C.J.'s stomach right there. But Lafayette, a big fourth down and one. I may even think about a timeout here. 
to make sure you have the proper personnel. But you know, you go into these games knowing what your two-point conversion play is, and you know what your fourth down plays are. So John looking at his calling card, he's got unbalanced to the field. Wadsworth over, just a guard tackle to the backside. Now Will Eisler adds to the weak side. They need a big okay. fourth down. They're gonna call timeout. How have they been this year on fourth down? They are four out of 10 as they call their first time out of the second half. And uh, we've had a lot of these absolutely critical plays yeah, today. Big plays, and, exciting. Uh, yeah, and it, it basically has not changed the game. No. Let's go to our trivia question of the ball game. And that is brought to you by Powerade. Fuel to power through with Powerade. Lafayette does not have a rushing touchdown this season. But there was a guy that had plenty of them. What Lafayette running back rushed for 50 touchdowns and a school career record? 50 touchdowns. We'll have that answer for you in a bit. Wow, 50 touchdowns. You ever see a running back with 50 touchdowns anymore? I mean, you never see that. You see wide receivers. You see quarterbacks throw for that. You know what? This is a situation where having your quarterback under center, I think, is a huge difference. For Lafayette in the past, they've been in the gun. But this is an opportunity here for Lafayette with the quarterback under center to pick up this first down with some downhill run. That center is Mike Donnelly. Fake the pitch, get it out. And it is Palumbo more than a first down. Rocco Palumbo headed in into the end zone. Oh, my. The Lafayette Leopards have got to within one on a 32-yard pass. What a call. Yeah, unbelievable call. You know, Lafayette struggles so much with the run, but they fake the toss, and they put the ball in the right hand, and they throw it out. Just a great job getting it out. Look at that block by the freshman out in front, Gavin Barkley, and then some great blocks downfield. Just a great job by the O-lineman, the formation, and you've seen it last week on the quick throw to the outside as the extra point. The extra is point added. is up. The extra point is good. We are tied at 7-7 seven, seven with nine seconds on the clock. Gordon Brex or Brock stays perfect six for six as that drive covers 65 yards in eight plays. Here's Mike. Well, take a look at it. It's unbalanced, but then they bring the fullback back across. So watch, toss fake, and watch the lineman get out in front. Look here, you got the big man, Donnelly, the big senior center out there. You got the freshman out there, Barkley. What a great job blocking. That offensive line's got to be so excited. They get, you know, demolished because they can't run the football, but they come back and they do the things that Coach Samus and Coach Garrett are preaching is every play matters. This play may not work, but the next play, the next play, and now you get a feel for what Coach Garrett is preaching in that locker room. Don't worry about the last play. Play the next play, and that's exactly what they did on that play. They all executed, all 11. Great catch by Palumbo and the freshman quarterback on a quick throw to the outside. Two running plays, picked up a minus one yard. All the rest in the air, six pass plays. And Lafayette has tied this ball game. Gordon Brock ready to kick the ball off. Got to cover this kickoff. Got to get down the field on a short kick into the win. That'll be Mohammed with the ball. Mohammed will come up the middle. And he'll get his ball club decent yardage at the 30-yard line. And that's where Holy Cross will start with no time left on the clock. When we come back, it'll be the fourth period. Stay with us. One play into the fourth quarter, and it was almost intercepted. Phil Parham sitting on an out pattern, oh. and he probably should have had it. It was right down on the ground. We'll show it to you in a moment. But Phil Parham made a great break on the football and almost came up with the interception, second and 10 from the 30. Off yet blitzing. And they hand the ball off as they run a draw play, and that was the absolute perfect call. Carrying it is Miles Alexander. He is tackled on the play, but after a big game by Michael Root, he got some help by Yazir Thomas. And let's take a look at the almost interception. Oh, this last play, 15 yards. Yeah, just the guys got to keep their head up right there. You see, he's been the workhorse today, I think, Alexander. Bullholz gets it out as uh, falling down, slipping was Yazir Thomas as he tried to make his break. The catch is made by Tenio Yeni, uh, Jerry Poe with the tackle. At the Lafayette 45, that's a gain of 10. And you see Holy Cross just picking up that tempo, trying to get a rhythm going with their quarterback. Back-to-back -back first down, carrying the football. 
for catching the ball that time was Miles Alexander. And Miles on the running play will pick up four yards. And I think this is where Lafayette may have a little bit of an advantage with rolling defensive linemen late in this game. It's not hot out today, but a lot of plays so far by Holy Cross. In the first half, they ran 48 offensive plays. So you got to be able to roll those defensive linemen in. And for Lafayette, it's going to come down to making a big play here in the fourth quarter. Well, they almost had it. They almost had the interception. Paul's running away from people. And he will drop it down. I'll be short of a first down. Derek, Derek Mountain is tackled by Poe. Poe will get it to the, or will make the tackle at the 37, a gain of three. Well, Lafayette's blitzed more in this game today than they blitzed the first four games of the season. And they had Puyos in a hole going to his left. Just a bad angle on the blitz allowed Puyos to get outside it and make the completion to bring up that third down and manageable. We got to look for them probably to maybe look for Puyos. He likes to run the football in these situations, put it in his own hands. Daquan Walker is in there. And Daquan Walker, as he gets stood up, and then Bo Bosch is there. Brandon Bryant is there to make the tackle short of a first down. We're going to look at another fourth down. Yeah, they're going to bring in some, some linemen here, it looks like. A different offensive tackle. They're going to switch the tackle and the left guard here just for a different type of beef. This is where they like to go over the left side looks like they're gonna punt Gary and they're in a situation where Lafayette has to be aware of the fake punt they're gonna oh. try to play a little field position here against Lafayette got to be aware of the fake if you're Lafayette coach Newberg I'm sure he went over with with the guys keep your defense on the field and what you call punt safe they are gonna punt it well the punt is away headed for the corner and that's exactly what they wanted to get down at the one yard line 31 yards away they punted for 30 we'll be back well it doesn't get any more dangerous than having the ball on your own one yard line in a tie ball game and a freshman quarterback Lafayette out of the eye they'll hand the ball off and just get it out of the end zone. As he, got out. he got out. It is going to be marked right back on about the one yard line. And Mike, I, you know, what, what do you, you look at your playbook here, what are you looking to call? Well, I mean, you, your, your pass plays, your quick game is really your long handoff here. As you see Will Eisler trying to get there, and I'm not sure if actually Dunn got out of the end zone. But you got to look to your pass play, some of your shorter pass game to be your long handoffs here. So I look for maybe a slant to Morazic or something just to get the ball out of his hand quick because the running play, they're going to be really selling out Holy Cross downhill. And they're playing inside of Morazic, so the slant will be difficult. Here's a throw that they need it. Dylan Wadsworth, they don't have the first down yet, but at least it gave him a little breathing room as Wadsworth will make the catch to the seven, a gain of six. Now, I like a play right here where you put Morazic into the boundary and you run that fade comeback, back shoulder play that they ran earlier for a first down. So let your senior make a play for you right here. Put Morazic into the boundary and take off and a little back shoulder stop route, which we've seen that O'Malley really can throw that ball on a spot. Have to get to the 11-yard line, the ball on the seven. It's a bump and run. Again, they play the inside shoulder of Morazic. On him is Ali Muhammad. Back, back, firing. And it's going to be an incomplete pass, having to get rid of it to avoid the safety. Uh, he threw it in the direction of Dylan Wadsworth. Lafayette has the win, but they've got to punt it away. And they actually roll to the two tight end side here. There's not much... Uh, separation between the wide receivers but a good job by O'Malley getting rid of it and now you see a guy like Dina Cola standing at his 50 yard line and again very similar to when Joey Chenoweth was back there you got to feel this punt if you're Dina Cola in the air. Michael Burke if you ever needed a long one this is it he gets a beauty that's a high spiral grabbed at the 41 yard line and a good tackle Dina Cola picked up about four yards on the return Yazir Thomas was there and Rob Hinchin also was there. And that was the kind of punt Lafayette needed. That was a 52-yarder. Yeah, we'll be back. Welcome back. Again, a little tension as Holy Cross has the football. Tie game 7-7, fourth quarter. 
They will hand it off. They won't get much. As there's Brandon Bryant again to come up and make the hit on Gabe Guild. And there's a gain of a yard. Lafayette defense doing a pretty good job on first down. And Holy Cross is really a pretty darn good running team, although they've kind of switched guys back and forth. Yeah, they've gone with three yeah, running backs running today. Backs. Walker and Alexander and, of course, Guild. First time I've seen Clue, really under center. He doesn't go under center very often. He'll take the snap. He wants to, he's looking for a quick throw. He has nobody, but that's him at his best. He makes those quick decisions. Yep. Short of a first down, he'll mark it at the 49. He'll pick up four, and it's going to bring up another big third and six. Tackled by Eric Mitchell. Again, good coverage. Watch him just hesitate here. There's just nobody to throw the football to. And Lafayette just trying to separate on that defensive line. But Puyo stepping up in the pocket. He knows what he's got to do. Live another down, third down and five. Huge down right here if Lafayette can come up with some sort of incompletion. Most of the time, they've kind of shown blitz and got out. Let's see if Lafayette brings a little bit of pressure here. Looks like straight man-to-man -man with a single high safety. They are going to bring pressure up the Again, middle. Again, he can, oh, that's got to be intentional grounding. No? No, he had a receiver out there. He just threw it into the ground. He had Guild in the flat, and he just turned and threw it into the ground. Watch the double whammy up the A-gaps here. Watch the linebackers twist right there. He was looking for the double screen and had nowhere to throw the football. Again, a great call by Luke Thompson and the defense doing what he says and executing a great double A-gap bullet blitz. Mike, we have to assume, I think, that Lafayette is showing some defense they have not shown before because yep. uh, they look confused. And here's another great punt for the Holy Cross most valuable player today. Maybe has been their punter. What a job again by Will McGrail as he drops this one on the one yard line again. That yeah. is a 48 yard punt. Yeah, and not much Joey Chenoweth can do. He waved off the fair catch and that ball landed right around the six yard line. The only thing you can do is field it at the six, but you teach your punt returners not to field the ball if it goes over their head. So you take a look at it. That's a, a hair outside of where they started the last time, but a first down would go a long way here for Lafayette. And how about a 99-yard drive? Holy Cross went overtime last week against Dartmouth. Tried to go for two to win the game and did not get it. I might just throw it straight out to Palumbo right now, let him go one-on-one -on -one out there. Just a quick throw to the outside, one-on-one -on -one with the corner. Make the handoff. O'Malley's in trouble, and he'll throw the ball, and that's going to be a safety. He threw the ball in the middle of the field. Wait, I think, no, they called that against them for a late hit. Oh, okay. That's a late hit on the defensive lineman for Holy Cross, 56. I was just going to add, that wasn't any different than when Puyo threw Zobrist. the ball in the middle of the field. Personal foul. Rough wow. passer, defense, number wow. 56. Phil Zobrist. 15 yard penalty. First down. And that could have gone really the other way against Lafayette, but they catch a break. I'm I not was, sure what Zobris did. I was just ready to complain about the call because Pujols did the exact same thing yep. earlier in the ball game. Yeah, let's take a look at it here. Play action, good pressure up inside. Now watch. Oh, that was really late. late. Yeah. Yep. Out of the back of the end zone. And it's a good, that's a good call. But the question is, should it have been an intentional grounding and an offsetting penalty? But that was a late hit dead ball foul. So either way, Lafayette's going to pick up 15 yards. I got to rely on my receivers now, both Morazic and Palumbo, to make a play for me. Even Chenoweth, who's been a little quiet here in the second half. Well, there have been not many penalties against Lloyd Cross, but the ones that have been called have been big. Chenoweth will get a few yards as the drive. St this now starts on the 16. Once again, it is Ryan Brady on the tackle. And. There will be a gain of a yard. You know, what I like about this Holy Cross defense is watch the way they run sideline to sideline. Zobers doesn't make the tackle, but Ryan Brady is such a great compliment to Nick McBeth. They does a great job running sideline to sideline. They play downhill. They have a nice defense. They've struggled in years past defensively and really had a great offense. This year, that defense may carry them. Second and nine. Back, firing. And again, they get it to Palumbo. Only this time, they could not get the block they needed. As uh, coming up, making the tackle, Ryan Brady. Here's John. Fellas, probably a little too early to start thinking about this, but remember, the wind is behind the Leopards, and if this game continues uh, the way it is right now, this thing could come down to a kick. 
late uh, late in the game, so keep that in mind as we go forward. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Cordenbrock, the freshman kicker for Lafayette with Jake Bissell out. He missed two field goals last week. Lafayette's going to call a timeout. Lafayette, that's their second timeout of the half. Cordenbrock's longest field goal of the season, 34 yards. He's two for four. And let's go back to the trivia question. As uh, we've been looking for someone to take the ball into the end zone, hasn't happened this year. But what Lafayette running back rushed for 50 touchdowns wow. in his career. Unbelievable. Well, you would think Eric Marsh, you would think Tommy Costello, you would think, uh, you know, these other guys. But, you know, Joe McCourt was just a beast. He was a beast. I mean, he was an absolute beast. Look at 2001 to 2000. They only won a Patriot League championship in 04. And he had 50 touchdowns yeah. from 01 to 04. So you saw was Coach Tavani was building offensively, running the football. So you look at you think maybe during their championship years he scored 50, but he scored 50 in some of the leanest Lafayette years. Joe is such, as oh. you mentioned, beast is the perfect Just word to describe him. Huge play, third and 10 from the 16. Oh, loading up in the box, five, six down linemen coming after O'Malley, looking for him to make a mistake. Somebody's got to come up big. Here comes the blitz, firing, oh. It, is it a first down? Nice second effort, oh, I think close. he got it. Really close. It depends on the spot, but Joey did everything he could to lean forward, and he got the first down. It's oh, they got the first down. Watch it. Just look, watch him open up right in the middle right here. What a throw by O'Malley. That's what John Garrett loves about O'Malley, the ability to see the receivers. He's got his eyes fixed there. He knows where the quick route is. he got a good pre-snap read. Nobody covering Chenoweth, and Chenoweth knowing to get to the sticks, reaching out for a first down. Huge. Huge first down. Remember, Lafayette started inside the one-yard line, their last two possessions. Without that stretch, there's no first down. First and 10, they keep the ball with the clock moving. Back to throw. Oh, and that one tipped at the line of scrimmage. Getting his big hand up there defensively was Neil Forster. Forster is 6'3", 295, and he knocked it down. This is where the game has to slow down a little bit for O'Malley. Again, just staring down the left side here. He's got a two-man route on the outside. We saw that ball tang in the air against Villanova, intercepted for two touchdowns. But he's got to just let the defense, you take what the defense gives him here and understand pre-snap read is the most important look. Second and 10, back screen pass. This will be in the hands of C.J. Emile. And C.J. will get up to the 30-yard line and pick up three. It'll bring up a third and seven. He's got a big, big third down here. And again, you see the speed of that Holy Cross defense as they're going to make some changes, bring in some guys to rush the passer here. O'Malley does a nice job with the screen. What a, what a great job by Macbeth just to get out there and slow him down. And then his, his uh, Ryan Brady. Ryan Brady just comes and cleans up. Are they attached at the hip uh, by any chance? Because 43 or 44 yeah, makes the tackle. You wouldn't be able to tell which was which. But... I look for Wadsworth right here. Remember, the comeback play has been big for Lafayette. Back shoulder fade comeback by Morazic at the top could be big. They need six. Back to throw, O'Malley. Oh, what a catch. What a catch. As catching it is C.J. Emil. If he can catch that in stride, it's a touchdown. Well, he got the matchup against Teddy Kappas. He's the D lineman. He's kind of kind of lock up with just a huge mismatch with C.J. Emil. So watch 91 trying to cover. CJ out of the back, there's just no chance. And you said it, Garrett, that ball's a hair higher. CJ Emil has split the field for a big, big game. But give O'Malley credit for recognizing yep. that matchup and getting lead. the ball too. CJ Emil. Again, Morazic a little quiet out there. Another first down. This time they get it out to Dillon. As Wadsworth lowers his shoulders, it always takes a couple of guys. One of them is Ryan Brady. The other one is uh, Andre Chevalier as that will be a pickup of two. Again, I just like what O'Malley's doing right here. Again, just look and watch. Quick fake. The Lafayette linemen, again, they just have to stay on those blocks. The chip blocks are a little bit longer and allow the play to develop. They're working a little bit too quickly on those, and that was the reason you're only getting two instead of ten. Eighth play of the drive. They are eating clock. Five minutes and 15 seconds to go. Handoff goes to Emil. Can he get the corner? He cannot. As he will get tackled in the backfield. As coming up and making a hit was number 30 or uh, 34, Andre Chevalier, out of West Hills, California. And that's that speed of the Holy Cross defense again. Lafayette just a little perplexed at why they can't get to the outside. 
You know, CJ's got to maybe put his foot in the ground right there. Not everything can be a bounce. Looked like maybe a little bit of a horse collar there as well. Loss of four. Big, big down here. 441 left in the game. Third down and 12. Can Lafayette again keep a third down alive? Well, they at least have moved the ball out from their one yard line. Boy, I don't think Holy Cross was expecting a run there. They tried to shake him up a little. The gain to the 40 is just a pickup of two. It looks like John's going to play a little bit of field position. He's got the wind at his back, and he's got a punter who hit a 52-yarder with the wind last time. So got to cover this punt. So the, kind of relying on the defense. It's been great today, but very important for the freshman, Michael Turk, to get this ball out and get off a good punt. Even a fair catch. Di Nicolo standing back at his 15-yard line. And he's going to collect this one at the 19-yard line and pick up about five yards. Holy Cross will start a drive at the 24 as that punt covers 41 yards. Now, before the game, I saw a bunch of the right. kickers kicking one side and the other. And A.J. Wells, the longest kick he made going into the wind was around 42 yards. He missed a bunch going in that direction. He's already missed one today. So remember, all they need is a field goal here. So for Lafayette, you gotta keep that in mind. 349 left, Lafayette with just one timeout left too, Gary. Well, we have this opportunity. Let's talk to you about how you can come watch the Lafayette Leopards live. You wanna purchase tickets? You can purchase them for the season through goleopards.com, well, I'm sorry, goleopardstickets.com by contacting the ticket office or go to tickets at lafayette.edu or call 610-330-5471 or stop in person at the Kirby Arena box office. You know, this Holy Cross team, Gary, has had a lot of close games. Remember, they they lost to Col uh, Connecticut. They were beating 20-7. to And then last week they were in overtime. So it really hasn't gone their way in these tight, tight games. So maybe that's an advantage for Lafayette as well. You know, Lafayette turns the ball over pretty well on defense. They haven't done it today, but maybe right here they're set up for a, for an interception or a fumble. Peter Puyos at times has looked like he's looking at a defense he didn't see on film. Oh, and right. He has been frustrated. We have seen it in his body language. But again, the Lafayette Leopard defense comes out with three minutes and 49 seconds on the clock. Holy Cross has all of their timeouts left. Lafayette has one timeout left. The ball at the 24 yard line. The defensive line for Lafayette has been very, very good. They only have one sack today, but they have in my account seven hurries and a bunch of just really trickery up front to kind of confuse the senior quarterback. They're coming again. Picked up pretty well. Puglio still has no one to throw to, and he'll get it out of here. That's only going to be a gain of about a yard as the ball is caught by Dina Cola and running him right out of bounds immediately was Trent Crossan. Now Lafayette not sitting back on defense. They're coming after him. Look at Brandon Bryant just bust through that A gap. They do a good job keeping Puglio in the pocket. You got to get to the depth of Puglios and then squeeze. You don't want to work upfield too far where he can step up and extend the play. Second and nine. Leopards coming again. Here comes a running play. That's not going anywhere. Leopards are all over the place. Miles Alexander, the running back, but the tackle made by Brandon Bryant along with Michael Root. Now, when you bring heat, a lot of things can get screwed up. You got offensive linemen looking at other offensive linemen, wondering where. Look at, look at Rothrock there. What a great job by Matt, the senior, getting penetration through that front side A and then opening things up for linebackers to clean up. A lot of times, Mike, the guy who makes the tackle isn't, guy, isn't the guy who's responsible for the tackle being made. You said it. Rothrock said it. is a good example on that last play. Yeah, one more. Got to make one more play here for Lafayette. One more big play, not allow number six to extend plays. Lafayette looking to blitz. Now they're going to drop out into zone. Third and 14. Back, Polios, back, Polios. Looking at the chains, and he won't get there short by a yard. They will not give him forward pride. He's going to get 13. He needed 14. Boy, that is close. Boy, I don't see if Coach Gilmore is going to roll the dice. Great job by Puglios, knowing where he got to go. And here's where I thought maybe Lafayette would have a spy on him inside. The referee getting out of the way, and Peter Puglios just diving. Tom Gilmore in his 14th season as the head coach, 72 and 78, two-time coach of the year. They're going to go for it. In the Patriot League. It doesn't get any bigger than this. And I, again, you've got to have your eye on Puglios pulling the football. 
and running it himself. You've got to have a guy on the quarterback on the quarterback read option. Walker did not get it. He did not no, get it. No, it it's going to be Lafayette football first and 10. Give it to that guy. Give it to that guy over there. He didn't get it. He did not get it. What a job by the Lafayette D. First down, Lafayette. First and 10 from the 33-yard line of Holy Cross. Watch the penetration again. The Lafayette defense is just, guys, inside. Look at this. Great job in there on the penetration again. And Lafayette so confident in the plays that time. Keith Earl, the penetration on the nose guard. The two linebackers crisscrossing inside and making a play. Here's John. Hey, fellas, we're at Fitton Field, and it is absolutely fitting that the defense makes a stop on fourth and one. Remember, the wind at their back. They're in position for their first win of the season. And back I don't to you see, guys. So, and I don't see John Garrett laying down here. I really don't see him running it three times into the into the uh, into the line and trying to kick a field goal here. He's probably got to get to about the 25, 22 yard line. I think Holy Cross called a timeout here. They did. That'll help Lafayette. Holy Cross has called timeout to challenge the spot. Challenge the spot. Well, wait a minute. They already moved the chains. Yeah, that's going to be a difficult thing to overturn. They actually, I think, lost half a yard on that. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there was any the question that they uh, they did not make this. And uh, the officials now will come over. There are people up in the booth, the wow. review booth. So. Why does Holy Cross games always come down where the stripes have to get involved? Yeah, right. Too often that oh. has been the case. My goodness, there's no way you can reverse this. They called that immediately. The two linesmen and the head linesmen ran in, marked it, and they ran in with exuberance. So you knew they don't run in that way when it's not a first down. Right, they right. run in, or excuse me, when it's a first down. They run in that way when it's short. And both of them had a head of steam coming toward the football. Lafayette is not the best start of a drive for Lafayette today has been on their own 35 yard line. There you get a look at the play. He no didn't get way. it. Not even no close. Way. He's at least two, two and a half yards back. In fact, I think they gave him a better spot than he got. Well, he had to get to the 34. He, he only got to the 33. It was pretty evident. And when he landed, the, the ball was on the ground. But and then that said, we have seen some calls up here that have not gone our way in the last few years that we have come up here. Well, as you get a look at referee Jeffrey Genis, Genischewski, I think is the way he pronounces that name. I mean, the way that, that he landed, I think it was Alexander, correct? Uh, it was, yeah, number nine. Okay. Miles Alexander. The way he landed, he didn't extend the ball until he landed. He landed and then he extended. The extension may have been much closer. But the way he landed, he landed far short of the first down and then extended the football. In fact, I don't even think he got to the 33 yard line or over it. All right, here's the call and it's big. After the review, the player Snee was down on the 33 yard line short of the line to gain. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Holy Cross is charged with its first time out of the half. Uh, yeah, it was the Quan Walker, but okay. I think he also confirmed our read. Our, yeah, sure. We, our analyze, ruling on wait, the field. we analyzed it from 19 <laughs> different ways. Again, I don't think you're going to see John Garrett sit on this football. I think you're going to see him stay with the offense and do the things that they've done here in the second half to get back in this ball game. They have not been great offensively, but they've run some good plays and they've executed John's plays that he's called. And a lot of this depends on the confidence he has in uh, Gordon Brock, whether he goes for the touchdown, goes for the field goal. Well, there's an interesting play we haven't seen. Rocco Palumbo comes around the left side. And uh, that's a pretty safe, nice running play. The longest running play of the day takes it to the 24, a gain of nine. And you see things like you said, Gary, earlier when we were off the air, you said, I think there's a few things Lafayette has not shown Holy Cross. And there's one of them. We have seen that play since the first, I think, the first game of the year. Don't expect John Garrett to sit on this. He is a, he's a gambler at heart. He wants to win ball games. Second and one. Long count, hand off. This should get the first down. Well, it won't. It won't. It's going to be a yard shy. Tackle made by Macbeth. 
carrying the football with C.J. Emile, and they'll still need a yard. Yeah, you got to think that Holy Cross got to be thinking about conserving time here. Watch C.J. here. Just put your foot in the ground, C.J., and cut inside that block. Oh, man, that's a tough one for C.J. Got the ball, got ahead of steam up, and just couldn't turn the corner and couldn't get the ball upfield. But a one field, yard gain here. A field goal right now would be 41 yards. And a first down puts it in Lafayette's hands. 30 seconds, the yeah. clock running. It would be nice to pick up about four or five. Have, yep, they have one timeout left right here as well. Give the ball to Emil. He's not going to get the first down. Nope. The Lafayette will probably run the clock down, call a timeout, and now the field goal becomes a little bit longer as this one is going to be about a 43-yard field goal. Yeah, looks like they were placing the ball a little bit. You see John's going to run time the clock out. down. Timeout. Holy Cross. That is their second timeout of the half. Going to be about a 44, 40, uh, 43 yard field goal. You go four yards back, or should be seven yards back from the line of scrimmage. That puts the ball down at the 42, 43, 43 yard line. That should be 33, makes it a 43 yard field goal. I saw Jeff Cordenbrock kicking prior to the game from this end, mostly exclusively kicking from this end, and he made a lot of them. He only missed one or two left, but he's got to aim it at that right upright and let it curl right in and Lafayette will get their first win of the year. Remember last week, Cordenbrock, he could be a hero. Last week he missed two and didn't really get a lot of elevation. So the other thing you gotta make sure you do here is cover if it's blocked. And nice to have Michael Schifford back in there yep. with the snap. Yep. He has been pretty much, well, I don't wanna jinx him here. He has done a great job. You get a look at head coach Tom Gilmore. Holding will be number 11, Austin McCrum. It'll be a 43 yarder. The ball is right Michael in the Turk. center. Michael Turk oh, Mike, yes, Turk is holding. Right in the center of the field. You'll have the best look. Kick is up and it is good. Oh my! Oh my! Flag. There's a flag down. Hold is it. Roughing Hold the everything. Kicker? What is that? Roughing the kicker. Nice. Running into the kicker, defense, that penalty's the Game's over, the game's over. Result is the Lafayette Leopards have won the first Patriot League game of the year. They have won the first game in John Garrett's career. They have come in and they have upset the Holy Cross Crusaders. And Michael Joseph takes out a big cigar <laughs> and he's gonna light it up. Unbelievable. What a great job. The stars of the game, the defense, and Jeff Cordenbrock after two misses. Watch this. Down, up. Remember, Lafayette missed their first field goal of the year, got blocked. That one is dead center for the freshman in the 10-7 win. So the Leopards put up 10 points in the second half, and they will win this ball game by a 10-7 score. You can talk about the whole game, but boy, oh boy, all the pats on the back go to the defense. Absolutely, that defense was amazing. And they came out with aggressiveness this week. They just went after it. And you could see it last week. They did some different things. They didn't do this week, and you were right, Gary. You said they have shown Peter Puglios things that he did not see on film all week long. And I tell you what, that defense deserves all the credit and Sean O'Malley hung in there, made the plays he had to make. R uh, Rocco Palumbo with the touchdown, and Jeff Gordon Brock redeems himself from two misses last week to the game winner. John Leone, of course, will get to speak with John Garrett. Nobody happier than John Leone is. He just wants to have a conversation with a happy head coach, John Garrett. And you see the team, they want to lift him up on their shoulders. And we know John's wife, Honor, is watching the ball game. And I'll bet the Garrett living room is jumping for joy Where, right now. Where's the Gatorade? <laughs> Look at him. He is so excited. But he wants to keep them calm. He wants to make sure that they move on, play by play, the building blocks for John Garrett. And again, this is a team in Holy Cross that looked like they had become the favorite to win the Patriot League after knocking off New Hampshire, 51-26, playing UConn tough, shutting out the Bucknell Bison, and probably should have come away with a win against Dartmouth last week. We came in here as underdogs. We will leave here as winners. And, and came in as 
probably 25 point underdogs to this team. This is a team that on film thinks they should be 4-0 and now probably think they should be 5-0. But they missed way too many opportunities today, Holy Cross. Some long passes early. They were trying in my possession to hit a six-run home run. And they couldn't do it. Lafayette was up to the task. Philip Parham, oh. what a great game he played. Brandon Bryant, the defensive line, what an unbelievable job they did. And then the offense finished it out. And you go back to the fourth and one. Coach Gilmore rolled the dice. Lafayette defense. Oh. And again, that's a jubilant group over there. They don't want to separate right now, but uh, we're hoping to get Coach Garrett before, uh, before we do get out of here. And what a job today. Not that they don't do a great job every week, but what a job today by the RCN television crew. Oh, Made it up by Rick Eel. I think they saw every play. They took a great look. They had a great look on that stoppage that led to the field goal and the win, and uh, probably a decision. Tom Gilmore now has had two decisions in the last two weeks, going for two yep. against Dartmouth to win, and they didn't get it, yep. going for the first down here against Lafayette to give them that opportunity to kick the field goal. Well, you said it, Gary. That, that is just a perfect way to put it. And I go back. Let's talk about the RCN staff. We're a team. What an amazing team. They had a team. We had a team. And we'll get another look at the field goal right here. And, and this was dead solid. Perfect. Remember, Lafayette has had some troubles. The right hash, aim it at the right hash, bend it in a little bit. And the freshman for the three-pointer. None bigger in his career to this point. Jeffrey Cordenbrecht now three for five, and that was his longest field goal in his career. And a great job by the field goal kicker as we get some final numbers as there you get a look at head coach John Garrett. And I'll tell you, a big hug too deserved by Brandon Bryant. He played another great game. The defense played a great game. The offense made mistakes. The defense made up for those mistakes. Yep. And, and, and think about it. They went into the half, Holy Cross, with 240 yards of offense, came out with 319. So that defense only gave up 70, 68 yards, 69 yards of offense in that second half. Lafayette put up over 125 yards in the second half. And that go back to that drive where he was six for seven. Let's go down. Touchdown. We've got Jeffrey Cordenbreck with John Leon. Gordon, uh, at what point in that last drive, watch out, <laughs> no Gatorade bucket, but Gordon, at, at what point in that last drive did you think it might come down to you? It was kind of crazy. Before the game even started, Coach Garrett and a couple other players said, it's got to come down to a last minute, last second field goal. That's all up to oh, Throughout the entire game, it was in my head. I was ready for it. Biggest one you ever <laughs> kicked? Absolutely. What's the longest? Uh, in a game, it's, it's probably close to that one right there. <laughs> Not a bad time to put it all together. Gordon, go celebrate the great win. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. I, I already have, fellas. I'm sure Gordon will. We're going to try to get Coach Garrett in here. It's Jeffrey Cordenbreck that John is talking to. I'm sorry, Jeffrey. Yeah. Je Jeff Cordenbreck. We're all going hey, crazy Coach. here. Coach, you got a minute. <laughs> I do. I do. You know, it, it, takes, uh, it takes a whole lot to, uh, to get me speechless, so I'll let you handle it. It's a heck of a win. Uh, these guys deserve so much. They just battled and battled and battled and overcame adversity. And the defense played great. Uh, offense hung in there and executed when they had to. And those third downs, it just, and how about that kick by that kid? That's just unbelievable. It's a great, great memory. Coach, listen, uh, you know, we've been there before. Uh, talk about teaching from a loss teaching from a win what does this do for this football team psychologically and for you and your approach to them going forward next week well it just builds confidence i i told them after the princeton game i said wait till you watch the tape and you're gonna you're gonna be flying around this week in practice because of how well you played in spurts we just got to put it all together and they did and they battled and battled and battled and they executed really in critical critical moments and uh it's just uh it's just a great effort by these kids. We don't. Uh, this is a tough place to play. Everyone knows that, Coach. First Patriot League win, first win of the season on the road at Holy Cross. Doesn't get any better than this. Let's build on it. Yes, sir. We were road warriors today, and uh, it'll just give us great confidence. And uh, we got to go back to work on Tuesday. Always do, Coach, and I know you will. Congratulations. Thank great one, John. Much. You got it. Yeah. Gary, Michael, a terrific day up here at Holy Cross. Congratulations to Coach John Garrett on his first win as a Lafayette Lever.